Sempre jovem a você Pour nous, nous l'aimons parce qu'il nous a mis le premier. Na estante já não tem mais tanta importância Do muito que eu li, do pouco que eu sei Nada me resta A não ser a vontade de te encontrar O motivo já nem sei Nem que seja só para estar
going on what's going on In this We're back. Moment, shout out to the CIA right. confident intelligent and assertive men out there one love to the F B I the feminine the beautiful yes. inspirational yeah. ladies how are we doing Get them up. No need to say where we are heading now. Oh, looking good. I follow. Smelling better. To the edge of it all. You know how we do it? Big Shirley, get your sexy ass in here, girl. So tell your good 
Come get in the G Wagon, Big Shirley. Big Shirley says she wants the G Wagon, y'all. Yeah. She says she's not down for the AMG. That's too low. I can't get myself in here. I need one of them subs. What's a sub, Big Shirley? You know, them sub cars. Oh, you mean a SUV? Yeah, I need one of them subs. Big girl like me can't be getting it's one of them little two-door cars. Big Shirley, come on. In the chat room. Hey, Diddy, Jimmy, come on. Where you from? Where you at? Do some shout outs. Oh, shit. Here it goes. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Make sure they say she's fine no matter what, y'all. Delicious. Snuggly Tumps. Come on. Chicago, Tampa, Denver. What's good? B Town, H Town, Detroit, Orangeburg. Bobbledy, bobbledy, bob. We are back. We are back. We are back. Shout out to the CIA, the confident, intelligent, and assertive men out there. One love to the FBI, the feminine, beautiful, inspirational ladies. We love you, ladies. How you doing tonight? Hey, Muse. How we doing, baby girl? With your fine, sexy ass. That's right. That's right. So, little housekeeping before we get into it monday night we kicked the week back off but it was still a little light on that show labor day but your godfather works and he works and he works so wednesday i expect to be back in full stride first and foremost here's what i need you to do i need you to hit that like button get the likes up keep the likes up we need to keep the likes up the engagement over 50 percent so we don't have to resort to doing stuff like this we don't want to have to resort to doing that kind of stuff. So keep the likes, the engagement up over 50%, if you will. Also, I'm going to ask that you're so kind, hit that super chat, that cash app, put a little something in the change. Because, uh, you know, vacations, uh, I took a little time off. I needed to recuperate, uh, get the batteries back up. So let's do it. Uh, where are my manners? I'm sorry. Fragrance of the evening from Le Labo. London exclusive, Poivre 23. Take Tom Ford Amber Absolute and put Spice Bomb Extreme in there. Sweet peppery fragrance, masculine as hell. And then <clears throat> since we're doing a London theme tonight, the candle of the evening from the house of Roja Dove and it's London. So, uh, yeah, got my London theme happening tonight. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Oh, let me go ahead and uh, grab this while we're doing it. Hope everybody's having a good weekend. Hope you had a good vacation. Let's see. Godfather, need to recharge everyone. That's right, man. Uh, did you miss me? These, these YouTube streets seemed a little bit different when I was gone. Heard everybody was like, oh, I wish he'd get off YouTube. Why don't he do something? Why don't he go somewhere? And then when I go somewhere for not even a week, when you coming back, when you're going to do another show, you're going to go live on Instagram, what you going to do? We back. We back. We are back. We are back. So that's a good thing. If you uh, follow me on Instagram, if you're following me on Instagram, check out my Instagram story and vote for what you like. I wouldn't... Uh, on my lunch break today, yeah, yeah, in between my uh, clients, I went and looked at some cars. 
Um, so many people love this Mercedes Benz G Wagon. So I went out and I checked it out. Let's see if there's maybe I can pull it up. On, maybe I can pull it up over here. I went in and checked the Mercedes Benz G Wagon out. And I will tell you that, you know, I'm kind of trying to understand what people dig about it. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Uh, let's see if we can get to it. There's the G-Wagon. We checked out the G-Wagon today. That's the white G-Wagon. They had two of them on the lot. And I said I'm going to give it a fair hearing. Uh, I always thought they kind of looked like squares on wheels, but people love these vehicles. I got a chance to get in it. Uh, they did a quick test drive. Let's see. We have the sound on this joker. Let's talk. But then we went to what I like. Two-door coupe. Daddy will follow. <laughs> G-Wagons galore. Uh, I like the black You're waiting for this car. Yeah, but I'm lucky like that. G-Wagon galore. Look at that. You call got it the, the Galanda Wagon. <laughs> I love the red interior. Interior was dope. Uh, I don't know, folks. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Mute that, mute that, mute that. No, don't need any copyright strikes on that stuff. Sports mode here. Yeehaw. They're trying to get me convinced to buy the G Wagon, folks. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we did the G Wagon. And I see what people like about it, but I still think this is much more me. Oh, hell yeah. So, just took a test drive in the G-Wagon. I see what people like about it, but they're getting the other one ready. I don't think there's going to be much. This is uh, pretty amazing in here. Ooh, we sitting in the cockpit. As tall as I am, there's so much leg room. I could sleep in this thing. All important startup test. Let's see it. Fuck <laughs> yeah. Wow. Roar, baby, roar. What's next on here? This is insane. This part right here is insane. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> Zero to sixty in three point two seconds. That thing is incredible. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh, shit. Yeah, incredible. So uh, I'm still looking around. You know, here's the thing, guys. I never really been much into cars, uh, but it's time to get a different vehicle. BMW, Mercedes. They're good cars. Uh, I, I kind of made it a community thing. So uh, if you have anything that you can suggest that you think would make sense, go over to the Instagram story and put it in there. But let's go ahead and get into the broadcast. All right. So more of a Lexus guy. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a German engineering kind of guy, you know. And, you know, here in Atlanta, you see everything. You see, you know, Aston Martin, McLaren, uh, Rolls Royce. I mean, look, it's a car. It needs to look good, but it needs to get you from one point to the other. But uh, yeah, anyway, just having a little fun with that. Just having a little fun with that. Don't take it too seriously, but that was fun. I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie. So in, in, in Atlanta, if you happen to see me one day in a AMG, going by you i won't be going by you because i don't speed i don't speed i'll be going 72 miles an hour with my uh with the with the alarm set to bing at 72 miles an hour that's right 
I'll be be in the fastest moving, slow, slowest driving car. That's damn right. So, ah, we're back, back in effect. Got the pinstripe suit on, the polka dot tie. When we do this, is this is when it's time to talk about a serious topic, a serious topic. So I wanted to kind of have a little levity as we get into it. Let's check the numbers because it is a serious topic tonight. Uh, and the first thing is y'all are tripping on these damn likes. Get these likes up, man. Or we go to all the way to intermission. 30 seconds to get the likes up. Everybody hit the like button, hit the like button, hit the like button. If you didn't catch my broadcast on Monday night, the broadcast on Monday night, I asked the question, uh, of, of modern women. What do you have to, what do you, what do you have to give to a man that he wants that you haven't already given to another man? Fair question. And I think it was a good conversation. So, cause so many women uh, are starting to have to come to grips with the fact that, look, many of you have given away your value in your youth. And now what you have left, it's not as though it's not still valuable. It's that it's been given to somebody else. So if a man's going to come down in your life later on and give you the highest honor a man can give a woman, making him, making her his wife, and he's going to have to do what men of value do, men who are in that high earners, not rich yet, in that hit squad, Henry's in training. These are the kind of men who want to be in charge. These guys have standards and boundaries, but they also have the 100% mentality. These guys deserve something. And I ask ladies, what do you have to give to a man that you haven't given to another man? And ladies, you need to be able to answer that question, especially the higher up you go in the socioeconomic ladder, the higher up you go in the status, period. Number one, number two, I said that modern women really don't know how to rap to men. Y'all don't know us. Y'all don't understand us. And what rap means is understand the men need respect in front and behind the scenes. Men need uh, appreciation. Um, all the time, men. I'm go, I don't want to. I don't want to mess it up. So I'm. I'm go right down the line, because uh, if you didn't see the whole thing about rap, I did it last night again, and, and Friday's going to be a good broadcast. But ladies, men need appreciation. Men need appreciation. So we need respect in front and behind the scenes. Appreciation, verbal and visible, meaning you can't just keep your mouth closed. When you need to praise and it needs to be visible, you need to show your appreciation. I said it to uh, the crowd. I want you guys to imagine that you work your ass off to buy somebody something that should be special. And I've heard this from guys before. They've gone out and bought, you know, these expensive purses and things like this for women, you know, Three, four, five thousand dollars, ten, twelve thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars, and they got a light. It was like, oh, thank you. I mean, it was appreciation, but it was nowhere like when you were a kid and got that first bike. Why? Because she didn't bought it for herself. Some other guy probably didn't got it for her. She got her own house, a home car, a condo, a crib. Ladies, this appreciation thing is very important because lastly. The, R, the P, rap, praise, overt and often. Why is this important? I'm, 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 I'm laying the groundwork in this monologue for, to, to ask the question, do, do modern women really understand how bad they've gotten, how bad things have gotten? And I'm, I'm trying to be as delicate as I can about this subject, but what made me think about this subject matter is when I was talking to those young ladies and the, the, that group of people, those two women and three men, and as I often speak to women around the city and around the country, women are often amazed at what's going on today. It's like women are like, well, wh what happened? What happened? And I'm like, what do you mean what happened? And I don't think most modern women understand how bad things have really gotten. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is look on the screen. Guys, keep the likes up because I don't want to have to stop out of the monologue. Keep the likes up. 
And let's see, before we also, before we do that, how many people have hit the uh, that um, super chat and donation? Because I know folks just coming here and you getting in doing what you got to do, but oh, hell no. Uh uh. No, 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 no. No, we got over 10,000 people in here. We got over, how many people do we have in here? Over tw almost 12,000 people? Nope. We're going to need at least 20 more people to drop something in there. Come on, man. Uh uh. Work too hard, put together, put too much out there. I get it. You're excited. You're seeing your family members, your friends again, things like that. I got it. I got it. So don't overlook it. Go ahead and drop it in. Hit that super chat button or hit the PayPal. I'm going to also pin this. If you want to be able to, uh, you're going to want to join the Patreon called the family. Yeah. Cause there'll be stuff that's only, only there. So while we wait for folks to go ahead and get caught up because yeah, I make no bones about it. I don't work for free and I want to be successful and I want to get compensated for the things I do. You're damn right. And I think you, I think that, that I have, I'm lucky that I have an audience who understands that a, an audience of men who want to be the best version of themselves and women who dig those kind of men. So when I'm out and about and I, I saw the lady at the uh, Mercedes dealership today, social media manager, and they were kind of shocked. They're like, who is this person? And it's like, it's funny. It's like we got a little, uh, 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 a, 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 an organization, a group of people who are all in on a common conversation. So that's a good thing. Good things are happening. Shout out to uh, Uncle D, Dennis Sperling, brother, sent me the pictures of the engagement ring. That he, that he gave to his uh, fiance. I'm probably going to show those at, at the uh, break to let you ladies know that there are men out here who ha are still marriage minded and willing to pay the cost to be the boss. But you must understand how bad things have gotten so you can understand why you're getting the responses you're getting from so many men. Why do you got? Why do we have this lady right here on the screen? I want you guys to go back and I want to go back a, a, a few months ago when I had that, that podcast, that, that show and I, and about asking women, black women just to smile and men were just exhausted. I had to, I had to just lay down after that one because in that one show, men, I think women finally started to understand what men have been saying for the longest. It is so bad that women think smiling at men is a hassle. So that's why you got this person right here with her face. I'm going to put her up over Muse because I want you guys to ask yourself a question. What man wants to get up and go fight the war and the world for that? What man wants to get up and go fight the world for this? Look at that, that snarl. And I'm sorry, y'all all know somebody like this. Y'all all know somebody like this. And I'm asking the question, are modern women aware of how bad things have gotten, how bad they've gotten? Let's start off with number one. Ladies, many women today find it an imposition to even be asked to smile at the average man, to be polite, cordial, friendly. Go back to that show. Go back and read in the comment section. And you hear this often. I got to ask you a question. Women don't want to even be polite, be friendly, to smile. And I think one of the biggest problems, one of the biggest reasons is because today so many modern women are emotionally unavailable. Between your job, I'm you ready for it. Between your job, I'm a PhD, your dog, your friends, there is nothing left for the men that you say you want. That is why it is buy a dog, die alone.
I talked to a, a woman the other day and I said, you got to understand while you're out here doing hot girl summer and this and that and having these little flings and things, your energy says no vacancies. There used to be a time in my lifetime where when women liked you, they would let you know. Women would actually flirt, send choosing signals. And today, women, most women act like they want you to crawl across broken glass and supplicate yourself at their at their feet just to ask for their IG. That is a huge disconnect. Ask the average modern woman when's the last time she actually stepped to a man, said something friendly to a man, wrote a nice letter, anything, did anything remotely emotional. And you're going to get what are you going to get? What are you going to get? You're going to get cricket ass quiet. Most modern women, I can make the case that the majority of modern women are emotionally unavailable. You have disconnected. Man, why is that? Because you have disconnected from your femininity. You are in your strong, independent, I don't need no man. You know what? I am a strong, independent woman. <laughs> you and your strong, independent, I don't need no man, hustle, work girl, uh, entrepreneur, grind, all this stuff that, you know, they write songs about, but I need you to understand why Cardi B is writing these songs and Beyonce is writing those songs. Both of those are two married women. And both of those, and even Cardi B, you can say what you want, but she waited till she got married to have her two children. So they got women out here talking about whopping hot girl summer and you're spending your valuable, your valuable years danger zone. giving it to corporations to where you get to the danger zone, 27 to 35. And then you finally start to look and realize I'm too old for the club, but I'm not, I, I, I'm looking at my career, my job, and I'm pretty much right here in the middle. I rank in the middle. I'm not going to become a CEO or a vice president, so I'm not going to have any stellar career. The rest of my life is going to be work, drudgery, and misery. Just work, 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 work. And I said it on Instagram the other day. We are not meant to be alone as human beings. We are social creatures. But sadly, today, there are more men who are husbands than women that are wives. Why? Because most modern women are have slipped from your femininity and it has made you emotionally unavailable. So when men are even asking, making the simplest request of you to smile, to be friendly, it seems like an imposition. Uh, let's keep it going. Where are the likes it on this thing? All right. Let me see something. So how many, if you, if you agree with that gentleman, raise your hand. If you agree with what I'm saying, gentlemen, put, put a one in the chat room because we're going to keep on going. I'm going to ask, I asked, a, I asked a question on Instagram, are modern women today mothers and wives? Because I want you to think about it. Are modern women really aware that how far they have slipped from a motherly, nurturing way? Look, when I talked to a young lady the other day, she wants to go have a baby and then have our grandmother raise it so she can go work at a job that makes just enough to pay for daycare. Talking about we're going to go travel to South Africa and Italy. I'm like, whoa, whoa. I don't want to just be married and be at home and a wife and raising kids as if that's not one of the most important jobs on the planet. They have convinced you ladies that your happiness comes from a job i'm a phd and i'm here to tell you it is not there are more women in no man's land 36 to 60 who will look back and tell you i wish i would have known then what i know now all this education bachelor's master's phd all it does is locks me into a cycle of college debt consumer debt, lacking real relationship history or muscles with a man, still judging men today based upon 
college or high school interactions because all you know how to do is the first part of a relationship. You don't, this emotional unavailability is huge because this is when the walls start to come up. This is when women start to become the home wreckers. Why are women wrecking their homes? Because they're not in touch with their emotions. And, and honestly, many women fear getting vulnerable, being open. That's why all the requests that men have today are for women to become vulnerable. And women are resisting that. And why? And it's starting to make you hard, masculine, difficult to get along to where now your mother's. Yeah, you're a mother of this. <laughs> That's what you're mothering now. Cats and dogs. Then you don't have the nerve to talk about you want to be married and have children and then want somebody else to raise your kids. Are modern women aware that how men think of you when they look at women saying this is going to be the mother of my children? A woman who doesn't have any real emotional capacity. And then when a child is born, that's it. I get nothing except as the man. What do you get? You get all the bills, a sexless marriage and an unaffectionate, emotionally void wife that you have to make happy, according to the world. And guys are like, no, this is too much because to top it off, to make an insult to injury. You look at the average modern woman and they have lost two critical things, dignity and being a lady, their style. We have women today fighting to wear bonnets in public, fighting to wear, to be tatted from here to there, bull rings, nose rings, raptor claws, clown makeup, different color hair, Plastic body parts, revealing clothes, twerking. I'm like, are y'all, what, what's going on here? Gone on Coretta Scott King and, and Claire Huxtable. And what is it replaced with? I'll show you what it's replaced with. Let me show you what it's replaced with. And then you want a man to get out here and go make $300,000 a year to put you up in the house so he can go get a Porsche truck. And what are you going to get? What and what he what is he going to get? This is what he going to get. You can't make this up. Yeah, I was I was going to a store the other day and this is what I wrote on my Instagram. I'm sitting in my car about to go into a store in, in Buckhead and you won't believe what just happened. A woman in the passenger seat of a nice Porsche truck opens the door, proceeds to slide her yoga pants down and takes a nice big healthy squat right there. A number 1 right there. The store is pristine and open. This was an attractive woman. She could see me looking at her and she didn't give a damn. Did she didn't even clean herself up, just got back in the car. Ladies, this is what men are seeing. This is what men are seeing, whether you like it or not. This is what men are seeing, whether you like it or not. And the guys are like, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to make this my wife. I'm supposed to, this is going to be the mother of my children. This is who's going to wear my crest in my name. This is what it is. No. This is who's going to represent me at my, at, at the company functions. And, and, and when I was in my, on my vacation in New York city, I'm at a really nice hotel and I see these photographers taking photographs of this huge wedding party and they weren't black. But then you see this dog, this dog who was about to walk in the wedding was preoccupied at watching two women twerk. Middle of the day, twerking, taking pictures while, while you got families, children, five-star hotel, Four-star, five-star hotel. And they out here twerking. Ay! Ladies, are you really aware of how bad you have gotten? There's no standard. There's no dignity. There's no respect. Can't nobody tell you nothing. You'll go to a restaurant and twerk on the furniture and then want to cancel the owner out of control and that's the PhDs. PhD. 
There is not really a sliver of difference between the PhDs and the quote unquote ratchets. This is how men are looking at this, ladies. And how is it starting to manifest itself? Women are starting to ask the question, why don't men approach anymore? What? Why don't men approach anymore? Uh, because you become unapproachable. You become so entitled, so rude, so you think you're better than men. You think a man needs to come out and prove something to you when it's you that needs to be proving to him that you're wife ready. Men aren't going to go out and approach you just to get shot down and get laughed at because this is what the, this is the environment. Men aren't going to, men are cost benefit calculators and they're, and far too many modern men are starting to say the juice just isn't worth the squeeze. What do I get after a little bit of sex that you've given to several people? There's a video on YouTube right now, a woman, 23, 25 years old, giving her friend a cake with a big 40 on it. And you know what that 40 is? Because she's got 40 bodies. What, go look for it. I'm going to start doing reaction videos to these kind of things as well. You got women out here congratulating other women for knocking down 40 bodies by age 20, 25. And then you have the nerve to say you want a man to set you in a house and go out and fight the world for that. And he can't even get a smile. Men aren't approaching. And, and when and when men do approach, you don't like the way they're approaching. Well, men are starting, who are our approaching? The, dude, the dudes with the cat calling and the holler monsters. Because, ladies, you've made the market the way it is. You condition the market. You condition the customers. Men are the customers. You can get me too by approaching. And you ask the question, when does it become harassment? Shout out to this complicated channel. Got some great content over there. When does it become harassment? The only way it's not harassment is if you're an attractive guy. I don't really have any problem with approaching women because, I mean, I'm a good looking guy. I, I think it's funny that so many women are, oh, he's ugly. This. Knock it knock it out. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. May not be your cup of tea, but let's be real. And most guys are like, if I don't make enough money and they're this tall and this, this, I don't have a real shot. So if approaches are down, guess what else is down? Dating. Dating is almost non-existent. Today, many men are requiring sex before dates. And women are upset. Well, then all you need to do is go to the New York Times article and read about how one in three women admit using men for a meal when they had no intention of getting with a guy. Why? I firmly believe in that one in three I think some of those women may have, I'm not in that, in that one in three, I believe one in three of women were being malicious. They have been told that a man needs to take care of a woman and do for a woman. But what women have not been told is what they need to do for a man. You're supposed to be done for. And in that one in three, I think it's fair to say those, some of the are, are bad women, but in that two out of three, I think probably 50% of those women were still just there. They're emotionally unavailable and there's nothing left to where they end up wrecking the relationship because all they know how to do is the beginning. All they know how to do is date. That's why dating is dumb. You don't date somebody to marry. The things you need to know about somebody to marry, you can learn in short order. You don't need to date somebody to marry them. But that's what we that's the bullshit that we've been talking about over here because what else you got? What else do you have? Now, I hope you don't mind me showing this because he sent me a text message saying saying it's uh it's official. Saying it's official. Uh -uh. But I'm gonna do this. Saying it's official. Ladies and ladies, you need to understand this is what men are thinking. It's not as though men don't want you. It's just they don't, men are at, at, at a loss today. They're like, well, you guys are impossible to please. You want it all. And you offer what? 
What are you offering to the man who is going to give it all to you? What are you going to offer the man that's giving it all to you? Hmm? What are you going to offer to the man that's giving it all to you? So this is what I'm going to do. Shout out to Brother Dennis Sperling. Y'all see that? That rock right there? That's, a, that's an engagement ring. And you see that sister right there walking off with the hands in victory? That is a black man who was moving out of the country. He was done with American women. He was moving to the DR. And I asked him to join my Facebook group, The Mix. I'm not a matchmaker. I just put like-minded black men and black women in a room together. Ask some basic questions. And they know people have kind of been vetted. And couples galore have been coming out of there. There's proof for you right there. That is a brother who is an extremely successful attorney. And inside of, and, and he actually did, we was reluctant to join my group, but finally he decided to do it. And inside of one week, he met his fiance. One week. The older we get, the, the we shouldn't be taking three, four, five years. It shouldn't take this damn long. But that's why it takes so long with modern women, because you guys only know how to date. And so many modern women realize that they don't even know how to date. They know that really what it comes down to is they don't have the emotional competence to be a life partner. And this is why I feel so bad for so many women because so many women have given their everything that you should have been given to your family, your children, your husband, your community, the things that make women really happy, you have given it to a nameless, faceless corporation or other people in furtherance of their goals, especially black women. So dating is, so if approaching is down, dating is down, marriage is down in our community. What's the answer, ladies? The answer is modern women have to look in the mirror and ask the question, how bad has it really gotten? And this is when you're going to have to sit down and talk to us, the men. You got to stop talking to each other. You got to listen to what the men are saying. Stop talking about toxic masculinity and council culture. You have to listen to what the buyers are saying. They're not buying. Men aren't buying marriages. Men aren't buying girlfriends or dates. At best, you're getting pump and dump. Short-term situationships. I wish we had more things like Dennis Sperling and, and more things like the mix. But the reason even that happened is because it was deliberate, deliberately putting like-minded people together, moving with intention. Ladies, understand something. It is on you to fix the problem, not on men. You're lucky that men are still even open to trying. That's right. You're lucky that men are even still open to trying. You're lucky that men are even still open to trying. Because had I not had that Facebook group, The Mix, or had I not had enough sway with Brother Sperling, that brother would have been in DR. That's a that's another that's a successful brother off the market. That's one black family that's that didn't exist. I'm not a matchmaker, but I find it funny. My critics and detractors talk about you hate black women and this and that. Then I want to see how many people you're putting together in your churches. I said it, and we're gonna talk about it. The, I'm going to say it right now. The black church is going to have to make an appeal to black men. You're going to have to make an appeal to black men and reclaim them. But in order to get black men back in the church, you are going to have to share. You're going to have to, you're not share power. You're going to have to give up power. You're too powerful. No man wants to go into a church and have another man tell his woman how she should act in his house. Ladies, understand something. I'm not your enemy. Well, how do you speak for so many men? Well, one man got to be real. How do you know? I'm, I'm saying what men have always said. Even the guy who I'm test driving the car with, they think the same. And this man's not even black. 
This is a modern woman thing. You're undateable. And if you're not dateable, you're not marriable. Are modern women even dateable? Well, if you if your entire life is spent playing it safe, not risking, wanting a man to build a mount, build a a, a, man, a, a a mansion out of diamonds, and then you will try. I'm going to use it something that I heard from somebody. This isn't mine. This isn't mine. This isn't mine. Uh, but he was talking about castles. And what is his name? I'm going to try to credit him down. This company, but this is not mine. He's like, we, we talk about potential. And he said, like, we want to talk about the castle. And he said, think of it this way. A castle. You have two people that show up and a plot of land. They like the land. It could be a lake. It could be a oversee a, a mountain range or whatever. But what's required? It's required two people who like the plot of land, the potential to sit there and build. And in the building, it's that day to day stuff, the investment. But far too often you get people who look at the potential and they fell in love with the potential. They like the potential. That's why love at first sight is stupid. You have to start building and working with somebody to actually do something. So you, if you have two people that are on the plot of land and they're building a castle brick by brick, that's how you build a castle. But far too often you're starting to have women today who will show up to the plot of land. They'll say, I like the land and will start building. And then say, I need to go to the bathroom. Then they'll be gone for two days. A couple hours, two days, three days a week. And then they'll send a text message. Hey, how goes the castle? And you got the other person over there building. That won't work. You don't buy a castle. You build a castle. And what happens as you're building a castle, something falls down, something happens, weather happens, arguments happen. You find a weakness in the hole in the wall. You tear it down. You fortify and build it up. The secret passageways, all this other kind of stuff. That's what makes a relationship. It's the little things. But far too often we're, we're hung up on the big things. The, the plot of land, the potential, the picture. And you need the only way you get relationships. If you're having two people that are sitting down there willing to build. You can't have a woman that says, I'll build if you build. Well, you ain't building to my specifications, so I'm going to match. No, no, you need to build and he needs to build. We're not building anything. You got people who like pictures of castles, phoning it in. And, and in the more extreme cases, you got people that a man is building the castle and a woman like, oh, I don't like this castle. Uh, make me another one to come back. Are you ladies? How much work are you actively doing to try to become the kind of woman for the kind of man you say you want? That's why I don't think you got ladies realize how bad it's gotten because all you think you have to do is show up and decorate the goddamn castle. No, you have to build the castle. How many times do women come on my show? I want somebody I can build with, but yet your hands are clean. Your nails are done. I said it. I got a fever <laughs> and the only prescription is more cowbell. I said it, builders, your makeup is done, your hair is laid, your, your finger, your acrylics, you ain't got dirty yet. And then you wonder why you can't keep it going because you're building, you, ain't, you can't build a castle. Some ladies, you may be able to build that house out of, out of, out of wood, but most women today, modern women, 
Even a, even the pig that built the house out of straw would be ashamed of the stuff you're building. No sound effects needed. We're getting real. Y'all need to understand how bad it's gotten. To where you just, I'm going to show up. And this council ain't big enough. It's too drafty. It's too this, it's too that. Uh, okay. Then you wonder why the very men who are builders end up building with a, a woman that doesn't look like you. Because they're willing to get their hands dirty. They're willing to invest. You want a man to prove everything to you. Then you want to give him what's left over after what you didn't gave to other men. God damn it. I said it. You want men to build for you a castle and, and no other man has had to build for you a castle. And then you want to invest what you gave somebody else who only gave you a goddamn sleeping bag. That's right. Men aren't stupid. So men are starting to put up boundaries and standards and saying, I want, I want a castle. I want to do this, but you are going to have to come in and invest. And gentlemen, I'm going to tell you just like this. And somebody should have told us early on, you don't do for people based upon how you like them. You do for somebody based upon how they are investing back. You give based upon investment. Don't listen to what people say. Watch what they do and act accordingly. Ladies, same thing. But I, this is a men's channel, so I'm talking to the men. Gentlemen, don't listen to what they say. Watch what they do. And if you have to ask yourself in your history, how many women have built, got their hands dirty, did something? The little things. The little things. The same person that talked about Castle talked about Disney World, the Space Mountains and all this other kind of stuff. That's what you remember when you go to Disney World. But in his example, what you remember is every time you go to a different neighborhood in Disney World, every trash can is themed for that park. And he, and he was talking about, well, think about the attention to detail it took to make the Indiana Jones trash cans, tiki's versus the Space Mountains. This, and it's like you stand in line to ride Space Mountain all day, and you get to ride one time, but in the course of a day, you use a trash can countless times. Trash cans and castles. It's the small things. And modern women today, you can't do the small things. Because you're not even tuned in to what the small things are. So the space mountains of your relationship are what you do in the bedroom. And it's the little things. Your man has a big presentation coming up and he likes banana bread. Did you bake him some banana bread? You know what he likes. Do you even know what he likes? Do you even know what his ego eats? No, because it's all about you. One time, he's supposed to know all about you. And I'm sorry for, to modern women that you haven't been told this. That you haven't been told this is the problem. This is why men are pulling back from a marriage and dating. This is why men are pushing back and saying, well, forget it. If all you have to offer is sex, fine. That's it. And we run down the list of everything I talk about. You don't offer anything other than really sex. Then why do we need to have the facade of dating? Let's just get to it. So my question to the, to the ladies, do you understand how bad it's gotten? And then what are you going to do to fix it? Because you cannot, because if you think that men are just going to accept it, you got another thing coming. Men are not just accepting it. There are levels of survival that men are willing to deal with. And they have gotten there. Men have gotten to the point to where they're like, if this is all we're going to get out of this, I'd rather, I'd rather have a, a buy a dog and die alone myself. Because you can't make the average modern woman happy because, and she damn sure ain't even concerned about your happiness. 
The things that men want, ladies, you're not giving it to them. Men want peace and tranquility, and he can't even get cooperation. How do you get to peace and tranquility if you can't get cooperation? So let's talk about it. Let's talk about it, ladies. Did you know it's gotten, did you, what, did you know it was this bad? Were you aware that it had gotten that bad? Or did you think all you had to do was bring a, a little a little sex to the table and that was going to fix it all? That's what you've been told. That's what you've been told. Or do you think it's for him to impress you? Oh, I know. I know. I know. I could be, I'm wrong. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. We're going to find out, though. We're going to find out right now. Money Get him up. Get him up. Y'all want these call lines to hit over? We're going to have to keep the donations coming. Gentlemen, sound off in the chat room. Let him know how bad it got. Be cool. Be cool. Be classy. Let the ladies know how bad it got. How bad has it gotten? Big Shirley? Pressure can't keep from man. Shout out to Avery. Shout out to Will. Nate Taylor, you're in the house. Shout out to you, brother. No men. Ladies only. King Ike! King Ike in the house! King Ike! That's my dog! Oh, I got plans for King Ike! King Ike! I am the king and will not be. I am the king and king king and will not be. Shout out to King I PhD But you can't keep no man I got a milestones I got a milestones I know Ladies you can fix this you can fix this, ladies. Ten percent. Ten percent. Here's a tipping point. This can be addressed. This can be fixed, ladies. All right. So here's what we gotta do. The, the Zoom link is open. Somebody click the Zoom link to get in there. Shout out to King Ike. Shout out to everybody in the chat room, ladies. These things can be addressed. These things can be fixed. But like everything in life. The first step is admitting that there's a problem. So the women who want to have uh, the women who want to fix it, you just have to have a spirit of curiosity. You got to ask what the problem is. You got to not take it personal when you hear the answers, because when men are starting to tell you, they're going to tell you in a masculine way. You can't let your feelings get involved. It's not personal. But if you're willing to listen to the men, they can give you valuable information that you can use. And if you're willing to humble yourself, get therapy 
and do the work. Therapy before the femininity classes or in conjunction with, but you must do the work. All right, who is this in the call line? E Evelyn, ready? Wave, Evelyn. Evelyn, you ready? Wave. Turn on light. Okay, let's go. Hello. Hi. How are you? Oh my God, how are you? I'm good. How old are you? I am 37. All right, so you got the subject. Are modern women really aware of how bad things have gotten? I don't think they are. Okay. I actually just started listening to you a few days ago. Uh -oh. I don't know how I did not know who you were. I don't do the YouTube. I don't I don't listen. I work all day long. So I uh oh well, you. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I just found out about you and I've been binge listening to you. While I'm working out, you're in my ear. I'm listening. Mm. So I'm like, oh are my god. Are you single? Are you single or are you married? So I am divorced. Okay. Any children? I am no kids. Okay. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so I've been listening. I absolutely love you. Um, so all, I'm like, I'm asking my friends, like, hey, do you guys know who this is? They're like, oh, that's my frat brother. Oh, you just found out about him. I'm like, listen, I work and I'm not allowed to have my phone. If I could okay. have my phone, I would, I would listen to you all day. So but, what, what outcome do you want to have for the rest of your life with a man? I want a new husband. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, now, how long were you married the first time? Five years. And you said you didn't have any children. Do Do you want to have, have children in the future, or are you are you are you good on that front? I I'm 37, so I'm older. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't. I want a child really bad. Um, I just so, don't know how how realistic that is for me at my well, age. Well, sit down and talk with your OBGYN. They can help you out more than anything else. But so let me ask you a question. Who filed for divorce? I did. All right. So you want another husband? Yes. Uh, let's say you and I were dating. And let's say that I'm the kind of man that you would love to that you would love to marry. OK. OK. Let me, go ahead and, let me go ahead and do my Thanos snap so I can change the world around to my benefit. I'm gonna change the world. My reality. I'm your. I'm the man you would love to be. You would love to be Mrs. Kevin. Can I talk to your ex-husband? You could talk to him. He might not talk back. No, no. I'm gonna talk to him. I'm gonna call him. Can I? If I talk to your ex-husband, what would he tell me? If I would say, "Hey, tell me about what it's like being married to Miss Evelyn." Um, so would he give you a ringing endorsement or would he tell me to find another applicant? He's, I'm his third wife. He should not be given any advice. I'm, I, okay. See, um, I'm I don't asking, know. I'm, I'm, I'm asking what would he, but okay. See, let me tell you what's wrong with what you said. Okay. Okay. You took what I said personally and you're taking shots at this guy. And all I'm asking is how did he experience you? So by your answer, I'd already be turned off. Okay. Because you haven't done, you show, you're showing that you haven't done the work to even just be, to answer the question. Because you, you have a job, right? Absolutely. Have you ever hired anyone? Yes. Okay. Do you not check uh, previous work history? Yes. Okay. Your husband is your previous job. It would be smart as a business person to check previous work history. And if somebody came through the door applying, saying, I love to work here. And I said, okay, well, let me tell me about your previous work history and your employees. Oh, they better not say nothing about me. They, they can't keep an employee. See what, see, see. Okay. Does that make, does that make sense though? He's probably going to say that I'm loud. 
Okay. And I'm somewhat argumentative in that I feel that I am in charge. Are both of those? Or that I want to be in charge. Okay. He would say that you're loud. Is that accurate? I am Hispanic, so I'm a little loud. Okay. Hispanic does not mean loud. I can't let you do that to Hispanic people. That's an Evelyn thing. Okay. So are you loud? I am. All right. Are you argumentative? I am a little argumentative. Okay. Um, what's the number one thing men want from a woman, especially higher value men? It's not a trick question. Listen. Cooperation. Listen. Cooperation. Cooperation. And if you're argumentative, that goes conflict to cooperation. Argumentative, because ultimately what men want is peace. Peace and tranquility. So argumentative may make for good, passionate makeup sex, but it makes for, it can tend to make for chaotic living. And then we put loud on top of that. There's no peace with loud. What do you think about that? I agree with you and I am working on that. What's the name of your therapist? John Cusack. <laughs> exactly. You don't have a therapist, so you're not really working on it. So I if do you have a therapist. John Cusack? John Cusack. I can show you the bill. Okay, I believe you. I, I thought John Cusack is an actor too. So No, that's that's his name. Okay. So how long have you been how long have uh and is he a psychiatrist, psychologist? Life he's coach? a therapist, like P, he's I think he's a just PhD. Cool. And how yeah. long have you guys been working? Together. I've been with him seven years. Oh my God. No, 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 nope, nope, absolutely not. What does that mean? What do you mean by uh, that? Therapy, you're supposed to graduate from therapy. Therapy can become another addiction. You, you, were, you were with their therapist long you with your ex-husband. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't do that to so, me. Don't do that to me, Kevin. I'm just, no, you, I'm just saying, ma'am. I'm just saying on the open market, what you said is I want a husband. And I said, all right. Let me, like, can I talk to your previous employers? Uh, and you said what you said. And I said, okay, well then, but you know, regardless of what my previous employers are going to say, I, I, I see my issues and I'm working on it. All right, cool. Tell me about how you're working on it. I've been in, I've been working on it for seven years. I ain't got seven years. If you still loud and argumentative about the seven years. Oh. I'm just saying that's how men think. Okay, that's how men so, think. In my defense, I okay. was worse in the beginning, but in okay. them seven years, let me just not, I'm not trying to throw blame or bash okay. or anything. It okay. was infidelity for two years where how his often mistress. Did you, how often did you cheat? No, I didn't cheat at all. His mistress came okay. up to me and I, I got arrested because his mistress. Uh, uh, Mm -hmm. me and i'm the one who got like imagine hold on hold on i want to be your, your your his mistress just came up to you in the kroger and started swinging on you and just started <laughs> it, she didn't just start swinging it was a little back and forth she i tried to leave the situation but she was like in my car and he wouldn't like it was how, a did, mess. She, how did she even know you I don't know. She she said when she approached me, she's like, I know who you are. She's like, I know who I, I know that it, it, he was right there. I, he I guess he told her about me, but that was his mistress for two years while we were together. So, so your 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 ex husband was in a some place with his mistress, mm -hmm. and his mistress rolled up on you. Rolled up on me. Why? I don't know. To fight, I, that, that's why, what I said. Okay, ma'am, but okay, listen what I need you to Ma'am, there's always a reason why people do what they do. Mm -hmm. And you're not innocent in this thing. You know something, I mean, you're innocent until proven guilty, but I'm just asking. Nobody just rolls up and says, hey, you're the you're the wife of the man I'm the, I'm the mistress to. If she, so, if, she want, if she wanted to fight you, was she saying... Why? There has to be so, some words exchanged. What happened was she mm. came up to me and she asked me what I was doing with her boyfriend. He okay. was my husband at the time. Right. I said, lady, I don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And she started pulling out her phone and showing me receipts. Like I was just talking to him and I'm like, ma'am, you need to get away from me. And I'm like, sir. And I'm like, I'm not going to say his name. I'm like, you need to get out. This was in my car. Like I was okay, minding okay. my business. Uh, hold on. So were you guys married? Were you separated? No, we were married at the new three months into the marriage. And I stayed because so, I love so him. Let me so hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You were three months married and a woman comes up to you and says, why are you with my boyfriend? Mm -hmm. An old woman too. Okay, a hold Shirley. on. Oh, hold on, hold on. Where did she see you with her boyfriend, your husband? She seen me. He was in my car. She came up to my car. I okay. think she was we, okay, at his job. She okay, was okay. The way, okay, you're confusing me because the way you've told the story is you were someplace and she came up to you and he was there also. You got, you and okay. your husband were together. Me and my husband, I was outside of his job waiting for him. Okay. He came out of his job. He got into my car. Right. And she was like staring at me. I didn't know who she was. She okay. knew who I was. She right. didn't approach him when he was coming to, to get in the vehicle. Uh -huh. She waited for him to be in the vehicle. And then she came over and knocked on the window and I rolled uh -huh. my window down. And uh -huh. then that's when everything started. And she had, and she said, what are you doing with my boyfriend? Yes. All right. And so at that point, what did your husband say? He, he said he didn't know her. And then she pulled out her phone. And then she started showing me like the text, like everything. Okay. Um, was there a car behind you? Was there a car behind me? Mm -hmm. No. Then why didn't you leave? So I wanted him to get out of my car. No, 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 no. I no. asked him to get out of my car. No, 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 ma'am. A strange woman walks up to you and knocks on your window when your husband gets in the car. Mm -hmm. You didn't know where she was staring at you. Mm-hmm. You roll down the window. That's yep. not wise. So I'm going to tell you hold, something. Hold on, hold on. We were hold at on. the police no, station. No, no. My husband okay, works I, don't, okay. I don't, okay, see? Okay. You want to fight. <laughs> no, I don't. Ma'am. I promise you I don't. I, okay, I do, I do what I do very well, okay? Okay. There was an opportunity for you to egress and avoid the situation, but that's not your, that's not your way. You meet conflict head on. A woman that you did not know, you didn't know whether she's armed or not, came up to your automobile. Your husband, the person you were there to pick up, was safely in the vehicle. The smart thing to do would have been to put your car in reverse and drive away. But no, no, no. You're going to listen to what a woman has to say because what you're doing, and she rolled down the window. And then she rolled down the window, you rolled down the window, she had to say, what you're doing with my boyfriend. And then when she said that, what did you say to him? I said, who's this lady? Mm -hmm. What did he say? He said, I don't know her, my ex-girlfriend. I don't know her, my ex-girlfriend. Those two things don't mm -hmm. match. I know. I know. See, I, I'm not for the cheating thing, but I'm just saying, ma'am, you're a fighter, too. That could You could have easily said, y'all would have been married three months. Could have been ex girlfriend. She could have been crazy. Did you give your man the benefit of the doubt? Not the way you tell me. Not the way you telling the story. You know, no. I don't hear benefit she of the doubt. She pulled out her phone. She pulled out her phone. There was no benefit of the doubt. She had okay, ma'am. She pulled she out her phone after you. She, no, 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 no. The window was up. Your husband was in the car. You had to roll down the window. Mistake number one. Her pulling out the phone, your car has P R N D 2 1 transmission. Put it in reverse, back the French toast up, drive down the street. What if that woman had a gun, some acid, a, a razor? You don't know what's going on. So, kind of just like you came in here saying that your husband. Shouldn't be saying nothing. I'm not saying he was right, but I'm saying, ma'am, for your own safety. But that's not the way you that's not the way you roll. You're a fighter. I'm working on that. I'm mm -hmm. less, I'm less, I'm less, um. Well, you're probably great in bed, but that's great. But that's but that's it. But nobody wants to be married to a fighter. Men want peace. And it's masculine, man. Ma'am, it's masculine. 
The feminine in you should have been trying to avoid confrontation. You asked your husband, who is this person? You shouldn't have rolled your window down. But after you rolled your window down, what are you doing with my boyfriend? That's your husband. You should have said, this woman's crazy. Let me back out of here. Drive down the road. Who was that? Oh, I don't know. My ex-girlfriend. Then you have that question over there. But you ended up getting arrested. I was also yeah. younger. I was. I heard, the, I I heard was, very well, ma'am. You got arrested. Yes, correct. I was also younger. Mm -hmm. how, so, I mean, how long did you spend in jail? Six hours. Mm -hmm. How much younger were how, What age did you get married? 32. 32. So it was five years ago? Mm-hmm. And you've been in therapy for seven years? I was in therapy when I was uh-huh your godfather's right again you know what i love you I'm, I'm taking what you're saying i'm taking it in i'm working on myself i'm trying to be less argumentative because and and i'm actually half of what i used to be i promise you i used to be i used to be a whole fool i used to be a lot <laughs> i'm not that anymore i promise okay you so have you had your ass whooped nope you need it <laughs> Okay, all right. Yeah, because women like you think you're tough. And you think you can handle anything. And that's the problem. There's so many of you ways you think you're tough. One day you're going to run up on somebody who's going to give you everything you're looking for. Well, I don't run up on people. Well, go to oh, you're going to interact with somebody. Ma'am, what I'm saying is ultimately a feminine woman drives the hell away. Mm -hmm. And if you're married to a man who was a cheater and he said, I don't know who this woman is, she's my ex girlfriend. You could have handled that and got all that straightened out and then done whatever you had to do. But your safety. But you ended up rolling your window down, inviting a conversation. You know, you're loud. Know you're combative. Know you have a temper with your husband in the car with a woman you don't know. You've been you longer than I've known you. And I could tell that was going to end up in a confrontation. And you ended up going to jail. Okay, now I'm saying all that to say that was five years ago, right? Mm -hmm. You still got that fight in you <laughs> today. I, I, I promise you, I think more. I, if this was to happen to me now, I would walk uh -huh. away and be like, keep him. All right, cool. Okay. So you, you would walk away. I'm so, so ultimately. Men want women who are feminine, beautiful, inspirational, cooperative, submissive. Because men want peace. 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 And one thing that's gotten told to a lot of women is, you know, dysfunction, chaos, passion. That may be great for sex, but it's nobody wants to live like that. Uh, I would say that if the therapist you're working with, you've been for seven years, you need a new therapist. You should have made pro more progress. And you were you're already in therapy for two years when you got married and you end up in a confrontation in front of a police station, nonetheless. That's not wise. I right? Know. Right? Correct. So are you dating anyone? That's the issue now. I can't I meet a lot of guys. I work out I see a you lot guys in the conversation. Day. You meet a lot of guys, but what? I can't keep them. I, they, 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 I don't know. They, they, they what? <laughs> I can't. How many dates, how, how many dates do you end up going on before it kind of ends up? Um, well, the only one that's been sticking around is this high value guy that I'm talking to. He just filed mm. for retirement 51, uh -huh. but he's been divorced six years. He's not sure. Um, but, and the guy that I really, what really you, like, but are you dating with intention? I am dating. I tell them I'm looking for a husband. I don't want to. But are you a wife? Absolutely. Okay. I was married already. Yeah. No, you no, you were married. That doesn't make you a wife. You so need what makes a, me a wife? You need to book a whole session. Because. You know what? I was gonna, but you charging a thousand dollars an hour. I can't afford that. I live in Boston. Okay. Man, my I'm fault you broke. Like four grand. Well, then, then, well, uh, first of all, I charge what I'm worth because I guarantee I, you. I agree. Hold on. Because I, I guarantee you in this one free call you've gotten, it's better than that seven years worth of money you done paid this person that led you into a fight. 
So you get what you pay for. Okay. Like anything else, you can find the money if it's valuable enough to you. Because I don't need your thousand dollars. I'm just telling you, I don't have time. I don't have time to go into it. But if you're you're not dating with intention, the outcomes you want, are you in the position to accept them? Because at the end of the day, you can attract men, but you can't keep them. And if that ain't worth an hour, enjoy your Boston baked beans. I'm gonna have to book you. I'm gonna have to book you. Uh, no, you no, you don't have to. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. No, I, I, I've been like, like I said, I've been listening to you. I yeah, I was yeah but the thing is, you hold on, you can listen, listening, but that has no, that has nothing to do with interactions. I got to get onto some other folks. See, guys, what, women, what modern women have been told is this combative stuff is, is, is going to be good for them. And some of these women think this, it makes you sexy and makes you desirable. And all it makes dudes do is decide to run away from you. Don't nobody want to be around all that. Mahogany, unmute yourself. Don't nobody want to be around all that. Anybody got time for that? Anybody got time for that? Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. It's a waste of cute. I'm Mr. Samuels. How are you? I'm well. It's late on the East Coast, so I had to like take my hair down, put on All right. lipstick. <laughs> put on your lipstick. Okay, so um, a little something. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to put some of you folks back in the comment section because that ran a little bit long, but I had a feeling that was gonna be a pretty good one. All right, so modern women, do they, do they know how bad it's gotten? They do not. I am 28 years old and I feel I'm a little nervous right now, but. Okay. Okay. It's all right. Just me. <laughs> just me. Just me. The Godfather. I feel that... no, no, no. That's, just a, that's just a nickname. <laughs> that you're 28 years that, old and you feel what? I feel that our generation is definitely suffering. Um, as a young black woman, mm -hmm. it's really scary. Um, I was raised with my mother and my father, but uh -huh. um, I think even with that background, I still see a lot of young women, especially that have no sense of what it means to be a wife, no sense of what it means to be a lady, no mm -hmm. sense of what it means to be feminine and cooperative. And it's sad because there are so many of these uh, platforms. There's so many of these, I would say, uh, campaigns that are really just marketing ploys mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. are um, in place to empower women, but it really does the opposite. And it keeps women lonely and depressed. And we like to think that we're doing something good because we have our degrees and you know, I went to school. I have my master's, man. <laughs> so, what do you want? So, what do you want? What kind of outcome do you want? I would like to be married. I would. Um, okay. I have are, you, are you in a relationship right now? I'm dating right now, but I'm not in a relationship. What's your longest relationship? My longest relationship has only been a few months. I don't date a lot. Hmm. Okay. A few months, meaning three, six? About three. Okay. Um, and you're 28? Yes. Are you saving yourself for marriage? No, I'm not a virgin. Um, okay. That's the politicalist way I can answer. But okay. So why, why <laughs> such short relationships? I was one of those women that were, that were combative and that mm -hmm. like to argue and fight. And I think I'm just now coming into myself within the last uh, couple of years and um, I really didn't give a lot of time to dating because I was mm -hmm. more focused yep. on. Yep, I got it. Dog, cat, which one? Say that again. Which one do you have? A dog, cat, what? I used to have a dog. I don't okay. have it anymore. All right. So, are you are you in therapy? I have been in therapy, but I'm not currently. Okay. Well, um, that's where it starts. Because my, far too many modern women are emotionally unavailable and moving in fear. Definitely. And and all that's happening is this. Danger zone! 
<laughs> because the, the, the time is ticking and the fear of not knowing how to get this done and they're not so the men who are looking actively are not going to sense or see long term so that's what I would suggest um, and I, uh, do you work out five days a week I do not um, I have a gym membership and I'm hoping to start how, using it a you? lot more how say that you? again how tall are you I'm five six dress size uh, dress size I believe 16 <laughs> I know, Kevin. <laughs> I, I mean, you're not giving me. Okay, you can be sweet sounding, but man, men are visual. Definitely. So, it, you 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 got to pick a struggle. And and the fitness struggle is the one that all women can take care of. Yeah. Now the therapy thing, but you you know that's a process. But the other portion, let me tell you why it's so important. Men look at women who are who are out of shape, and that means you're not under any discipline. The last discipline most women are under is to get a college degree. And, and if you're going to get married and have children, that means the baby weight ain't going anywhere. So um, first thing you got to get, you 5'2"? Five 5'6". Five five six. Five six. Dress size 16? Yes. So at 200, over, under? Over. All right. Okay. That's that just, you got to, you know everything I've said. Hey, 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 Gap, you know it all. You, you hear it all. You got to do something about that. That is a non-negotiable, non-starter. You got to do something about that. Not just for men, for yourself. Definitely. So, uh, I'll go ahead and put you back in the call queue uh, and put some more folks there. Ladies, I'm going okay. to tell Okay, uh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, and you were just talking to me. You're not on camera right there. So, ladies, you, you young ladies, you, you, must, uh, you must get your fitness together. You young ladies got to get your fitness together. Uh, uh, let me put these two people over here in the Godfather line. I can't see you. Oh, yeah, I can't see you folks. So goodbye. Bye, trolls. I don't do trolls. Uh, Alexis, uh, Wheezy, then, yeah, the next. All right, Alexa, go ahead. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well in yourself. Good. How old are you? 33. 33. You're single or married? I am single, but Any, ch any children? I do have a 15-year-old. All right, and you're 33. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the 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 question on the on the table is, do modern women under, know how bad they really gotten? How things are bad things really gotten? What do you think? Uh, a majority, I would say no. I would like to think that some of us are more aware now, but as a general consensus, I would say no. Okay, why do you think if you? What percentage of women, you say the majority would say no? Correct. Okay, so um, what, percent, what, what, what percentage of women would you say really kind of understand how bad it's gotten? Maybe 8 to 10%. Okay, gosh, that's, that's low. So um, what do you think it's going to take for them to, modern women to get a wake-up call? Um, being called out. Honestly, I here recently have been um, made aware because I was called out myself on many things, which is why I'm probably not married still to this day. Called out by whom? Men and their families. Okay. Friends, you know, things like that. Other women. Well, you do realize that most men can't call women out because it's cancel culture. A lot of women might not be receptive. That is that is correct. But some of us are. I think there's going to, I think what's going to have to happen is women are going to have to start calling out women. I agree. I because, wholeheartedly agree with that. Because the average woman doesn't listen to the average man. Uh, I can see that. So can see that uh, you said, you said you would like to be married one day? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, were your mother and father married? 
No, they never dated. So you know what I'm going to ask the next question is, are you a wife? I would say I'm working towards being a wife. Okay. Um, well, everything starts with awareness. So, um, yeah, uh, it, it's it, knowing where your, your issues are. are you, and I asked you the question about therapy. Are you in therapy? Are you actually seeking therapy? I have my first session tomorrow, actually. There you go. Well, yeah, I'm quite there excited. you go. At least yeah. we're starting to move in the right direction. All right. I'm going to get somebody else on here. So, Good night. Bye-bye. You can always tell a woman who, who's actually doing some work. Her, their energy is very different. Uh, I see all the people in the the call key was going bonkers tonight. So, Wheezy. And go ahead. All right. Go ahead. Unmute yourself. Let me also say this. Uh, don't think just because you're cute, you can you can uh, have an attitude. Cute don't mean crap today. Look at love and hip hop and everything else. And you see some attractive women. Men will go down and looks to go up in cooperation and peace. Hello. How are you? I am well. How are you? Good. You mind speaking up a little bit? You're a little low. Um, I'm well. How are you? Good. How old are you? I am older. I'm 43. All right. You single? You married? I am divorced and very single. All right. So modern women, do you think modern women understand how bad things have gotten? So I don't understand how bad things have gotten because I, okay. I would consider myself to be a traditional okay. wifely woman. Um, but I wrecked my home, as you would say, and divorced many many years ago and so my son is 19 we raised a great kid together regardless um but i chose to just be a mom and not have men in and out my house so i have literally been out of the dating game for a long time the few relationships i have had I, I, okay no good and now and so i've been single for a few years now about three years Okay. No dating, but mm -hmm. I am human. So sex, and that was all I had to offer because that's all I wanted. I didn't, I wasn't in a position to be in a relationship. Now my son has grown. He's completely independent and mm -hmm. I'm ready, I think, but I don't even know what's going on out here. Well, had well, men well first off, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Sounds like the last time you had a relationship was in your child before when your child was very young well I, the, I had a relationship maybe three years ago how long was that one year 11 months okay and and then before that what was the longest relationship you had my marriage and and when my, was that and how and what age were you when you divorced you need to turn down the volume um getting feedback when we got divorced well hmm. We have been you together you? since 2007, but we stayed together until 2014 for health for health insurance for me. Okay. So, and if you have me on, sound like I'm, you got me playing on the background. Turn off YouTube. You should only be on Zoom. No, I'm only on my laptop. Okay. Okay. I uh, will turn the volume down a little bit because I'm getting background. Sorry. So here's the thing. As I'm hearing, regardless as to how you got here. You still sound like you're effectively dating at 43, like a woman in her 20s. No. Okay. What I mean is, okay. How old were you when you got your child? 25. 25. And you were, and that was with your husband? Yes. Right. And the longest relationship you had outside of your husband has been 11 months. Yes. Right. So it, you can make the argument that you stopped emotionally maturing in your early 20s when your child was born. I mean, I guess you could, but I I intentionally chose to be a mother because right. I didn't, that's I knew fine. That I did not give a man. That's fine. But that also means that's the level of your dating experience. So now you're out here yeah. with experience that's two decades old and you're yeah. two decades yeah. older. So people look at you at 43 and they're expecting a woman who is more seasoned 
And that's not what it is because you chose to do something different. Relationship muscles atrophy and you have not exercised them. And what you're telling me is you out here and you're just out here and you don't know what's going on because you haven't dated. You put, you put all your energy as you should into a being a mother. Absolutely. And this is why we're, and this is why this doesn't work. I had a dog. I was getting ready to buy a tiny house and I was going to die alone probably with the dog. But then I ran into you and I'm like, oh my God, this is. Well, but my point is you're not meant to be alone at this age. It was meant to be married. So uh, I would normally ask you why you're, why you and your ex, is he still, your ex still alive? Is he remarried? He is. There you go. Yeah. I'm gonna say this to the ladies. I don't know where you guys got off thinking you're supposed to get infinite chances. You get a man who wants to marry you, you marry him, and you stay with him for the rest of your life. Because you don't get more chances the older you get as a woman. That's just not how it happens. So now at 43, you're in a position to where you kind of got to get get caught up with what's going on out here, and then what kind of outcome do you do you want to remarry? No, I don't think I want to be remarried because I don't think that I. And I again, I, you're saying my emotional maturity start stopped at twenty, so that's how you can make the right now. I don't, I don't know. I'm sorry. But what 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 kind of uh, what kind of relationship do you want with a man? I, I want something like long term, like committed. We're gonna stick in this. Period. Like I want that. Mm-hmm. An agreement, a, a business, whatever. Uh, uh, I don't, you sound, I, you I sound don't like you sound like one of these married. one of these women I'm talking about living apart together. These new wave kind of situations because you got you, you you've decided well, to live because, your life and, and that's true and i'm going to tell you that you do know what you're talking about because my husband was in the military so we i mean we were married 14 years and maybe we lived under the same roof two years two and a half years out of those yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have to live by yourself because you can't be cutting a man off i'm sorry i'm just saying this is you you you're so used to being in charge and that's i'm just saying what it is and that's why I talk about living uh, apart together is what's probably going to be what a lot of women in your position do because you don't have the skills to cooperate or cooperate with the man in the same geography. But same that's going to be a hard sell for you because uh, as long as there's not a state-sponsored marriage, I mean, it's possible, but that means you got to get out there and make yourself heavily available. Because after forty five, stuff pretty much drops off the off the cliff for all women, black women included. That's that's what it kind of gets to. So, um, I, I understand why you d- focus on your kid and everything, but yeah, you, you got to learn how to focus on a man. And what I'm hearing is, like many women, they never focused on the men, and then it's not something you decide to do as an afterthought. Uh, Lia, Lia, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Hello. It's, it's Lasia. Lasia, you know, black folks are these names. How old are you? I'm 24. 24. All right. Uh, single, married, what? I'm single. All right. So, what do you got on the topic? Uh, do minor women know how bad it's really got? Um, I don't think we fully know, but I think we're starting to see how it how it is. Um, I'll say for me, my personal experience, I'm starting to see as a black woman dating that we are kind of at the bottom and Mm -hmm. we're not like the first selection. When I walk in, we're not the first first selection of whom? I will say of, of black men, I'll say of not of all men, but I mostly focus on black men. That's who I prefer. But a lot of black men marry black women at an 86% rate. What are you talking about? You got okay. You do have a point there, but mm-hmm. I'll just say, yes, they do marry them. But as far as like desires or um, preferences, as they would like to say, 
a lot of them like our look or like our charisma, but when it comes to our attitudes or just the way that we communicate and work with them. So when you say somebody walk in the room, how can they tell that about you? Well, when I say like walk in the room, I mean like when we walk in the room, men are coming up to us first, if that makes sense. Who are they coming up to first? I'll say most of the time it's like Mexican, well, Latina girls mm -hmm. or Caucasian women. Uh -huh. And and and, uh, and I'm going to ask you a, a, a straightforward question. Are these women more physically fit than the women you're talking about? In no, some don't, cases. No, no, yes. don't, no, don't okay. give me, don't give me the special snowflake answer. I hate when women do this shit. Well, it, it all depends. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Look, men are visual. Mm -hmm. You cannot tell me that black men walk into a room where all things being equal, all the women in there are five foot four, dress size four, and they just go to the white women and Latinas. That's not even how we're built. Are the women you're talking about that are getting passed over physically fit? Five foot four, 120 pounds, dress size four. Yes, no. No. There you go. That's why you're getting passed over. Because 80% of you are overweight. But you put it off on race. And it's that's a cop out. I wasn't saying like, when I gave you 86% of black men marry black women at 86% rate, you still found a way to make your argument. I was talking about communication and like how it has to be an, it has to be an approach before communication. True. You said, you said that they're not even approaching, right? Mm-hmm. Well, how can you communicate if there's not an approach? You can't. So if if a if a black woman in your circumstance that you're talking about gets approached, then the issue becomes what? Well, I'll say with my experiences, a lot of men my age aren't really looking to settle down or be serious. They're kind of wanting to play the field. So I feel like that's where but you said these but you said these men are still approaching white women and Latinas. They are. And they mm -hmm. go and they settle and they settle? They they do what? They not, settle. Not settle, like settle down. You know what I'm saying? Like get mad. Ma'am, ma'am, okay, okay. Ma'am, what you just said makes no okay, ma'am, what you just said makes no sense. The, I said after they approach mm -hmm. and then what? You said, well, most men my age aren't looking to settle down. They're playing the field. Then I said, well, what you just said is those men are approaching white women and Latinas. Yes, they are. And then what? And then they get them and they settle down with them. Meaning that a black woman could have been settled down with two. It's not the youth. It's not their age. See, what black women never want to deal with is the fact of the matter is your fitness and your attitude are your biggest problems. If you would be as fit as your competition and as friendly, cooperative and submissive as your competition, you would win the majority of your men like any other race of women do and have done throughout history. But that's what I was referring to with the cooperation and the communicating. That's where it goes wrong. But it goes wrong from whose standpoint? The men or the women? I could say both. It, it, no, you can't say both because you just said these men go off and settle down with white women. See, the more y'all do this bullshit, both. It's always both. Why can't you ladies just hold yourselves strictly accountable? Because you're losing to other women. The higher up your men go, especially your generation, more and more guys are saying they're not even starting to deal with women 
black women because of your attitudes. You That's know what this. I'm saying with the community. Well, then you have to fix it. Because if they're not dealing with you, it's not as though they're not dealing with any woman. So let me ask you a question. Are you saying that the men in your generation are choosing to have no woman or are they dealing with women other than black women? They're dealing with women other than black women. Then right they're there women. tells you, then right there shows you the problem. They're dealing with women. If you had said they're choosing to not deal with any women, then you could have made the argument. But now if they're dealing with women other than black women, why not understand why? Like I said, number one, are they as fit as your competition? You said no. 80% are overweight and 80% of that number are obese. You've heard black men talk about the attitude. You've been on this channel listening to women who don't even want to smile. And when I start asking these specific questions, you want to go down to both. I don't, this is what happens to matriarchy where you can't hold women accountable. They never want to get down to the point. The problem is on your side. The men are still getting with women. Yes or no? The young men are still getting with women. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Yes. Right. So they're going into the store to buy something. They're walking out with a Becky or a Marisol and they could have had a Kenya. So it ain't like they walked into the store without money and not intending to buy. You got to make your product better. But that's what I was saying in the beginning. It okay. comes down to the communication and us cooperating with each other. No, and no, 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 no. It comes to you cooperating with us. See, that's why you keep going. See, you keep talking well, like we're part of one-sided you, cooperation. Well, you don't you don't have a choice. See, you're losing to Marisol Myling. You're losing to Becky Marisol and Myling. See, you keep saying cooperate with us. Why does he have to cooperate with us when he's going to go over to Marisol and she's willing to cooperate with him? He's going to go to the situation that is going to cooperate with him, then he has to cooperate with you. But if you're cooperating, isn't that a team effort? So doesn't it take two? Well, if that's the case, you shouldn't be losing. If, if what you're saying is the case, all things being equal, you should, be, you should not be losing to non-black women. But when I speak with most black men, they don't even want to cooperate with us. They already have it in their mind. That, mm. oh, Where'd that come from? Good. Where'd that come from? I'm not sure where it really. I mm, it just came. It just popped in their head. It just came from nowhere. One day they just woke up and said, this is what it is. No, because they've grown, really they've grown up. No, I'm going to tell you where it came from. This is very conversations where it came from. The inability for you guys to be honest. These guys are your brothers, your cousins, your neighbors. They went to high school with you. They went to junior high with you. They went to elementary with you. They went to pre-K with you. Their mothers are you. Black men know black women intimately well because black women run everything in the black community. So if black men in your generation are choosing to not even deal with them, it's not because it doesn't come from somewhere. And you're talking about we need to cooperate with each other. Ma'am, if you're on the losing end of a relationship situation, if you don't get black men, what is your option? White men, Hispanic men, Asian men, Middle Eastern men, they are not running over to the hood or the neighborhood to scoop up black women in large numbers. Is it starting to sink in yet? I said in the beginning that it already sunk in with me and I'm realizing that we just don't cooperate. I don't know. Well, when you, you know, said we don't cooperate, you said we don't cooperate with each other. Yes, we do not cooperate and, with each and other. And that's the, the point. And that's and, and see the point is not we don't cooperate with each other. You women don't black women don't cooperate with black men. You must cooperate with us first. This is about I order. Have plenty of black women that would not mind cooperating with a black man or communicating with a black man. It just takes. It has to be a two-way street. It can't be just receptive on. Okay, I don't end. think you're under. I think. Uh, see again. 
right there. You ran it into a ditch. I know plenty of black women who would not mind. Would not mind while your non-black competition is a static to. They're wanting to. They're leaving their, their racial preference of men to come over to talk to black men. They're choosing to come leave their neighborhoods and come get with Jamal. While Jamal's in your neighborhood and you're talking about, I wouldn't mind. So Jamal has to ask himself, which woman is more ecstatic, exuberant, and excited about cooperating with me, Kenya or Becky? And by the words out of your own mouth, other women are more because you wouldn't mind cooperating with them. Somebody wants, that means I'll do it if I have to. I'll do it. It's okay. I won't mind. Hey, you want to go to the movies? Oh, I don't mind. You want to go to Hawaii? I don't mind. Hey, you want to go to the movies? Oh my God, I would love to go to the movies. Hey, you want to go to Hawaii? Oh my God, thank you for buying tickets. You notice how different that is? Hello? Are you stating that is... Do you notice how different those two things are? Yes, I noticed the, the difference in tone and effort, excitement. I see it. I hear it. But what I'm... But what Where I'm coming from is when you say we have to be ecstatic or we have to be the ones who want to cooperate or to make it work, how can you cooperate or make it work with somebody who already has it in their mind that this is not going to work out anyway? So let me just get in, get what I want and move on. Mm, sounds like you got a problem. Sounds like you got a lot of work to do. Sounds like you got a lot of, if you have a, if you got a, if you're trying to sell something to a market and they already have it in their mind that your product is bad, it's not going to give me what I want. It's not going to give me the outcome. And either you sell your product or you go bankrupt and don't eat. What do you have to do? What do you have to do? What do you have to do? Don't, don't ask me a question. What do you have to do? You have to find out what you need to do to sell your product. Ding, ding, fucking ding. Black women have to figure out why black men are not buying them. And then you have to give black men what they want. Up front. Not, you can't, I don't mind. You got to be willing to outcompete Becky Marisol and Mylene. Because the problem that black women are having with black men is one that black women have earned. Like it or not, young lady, that's the way it is. And here are your options. If you don't want to earn it, then I'd like to see you go get it with Brad, Ahmed, Jose, or Muhammad. They ain't putting up with it. We all you got. That's why I said you don't you're you're speaking like, well, we gotta do it with each other. No, we don't have to do it with each other. Either you get on our program or you buy a dog and die alone. But I don't think you like it. I don't think you guys like it. And I don't think they like it in that starker term, guys. You see how it goes down? It's like, well, still trying to make it to where, well, it's not fair. Go ahead and say it. it's not fair. It's not fair. Go ahead and say it. it's not fair. It's not right. It shouldn't have to be. How tall are you? It shouldn't be that way. How tall are you? I'm 5'10". Dress size? 160, 165. Dress size? size. Dress size? Dress size, uh, 8, 8 or 10. Mm -hmm. And you were saying it shouldn't be what? I was just saying it's it's going to, I don't understand how we can make some cooperate or make something work with somebody who does not have interest in doing that. Mm. They don't have interest. You act like, okay, you make them interested. That's all you got, ma'am. I don't know how you do it. Uh, you get off your lazy ass and you try. You fail, you try better. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Have you ever had to go after something that wasn't given to you? This is entitlement. You're not entitled to a black man. We don't belong to you. Cause you, cause you have long, cause black women have for the longest acted like you didn't belong to black men. So now you're free. 
It's a free market economy. So now you have to sell yourself. You got to compete. And if you don't compete, if you don't, how, and if the black man is in your neighborhood and you can't convince the black man in your neighborhood that you're the best pick, you think you're going to go to the next suburb of the next group of men and convince them that you're the best pick? You think those women are going to let you take their men? I just don't. How do black women act like we don't belong to black men? I, God I damn! Black Did you not crazy. answer the question? Oh, I'm sorry. If you can't get the men in your neighborhood, what are you gonna get? You're gonna go to the other groups, other races, neighborhoods. You still gotta convince those men, and you gotta compete with those women. I want everyone to understand. This is how lazy and entitled. The modern young black woman's at the modern black woman's attitude has become to black men. She can't even understand what I'm saying. I, I understand that she's really confused because it's like, well, I don't get it because you, you, you think it should be easy. Ma'am, if every black man today who was marrying age married every black woman in this country, there would still be two million more black women left. Listen and listen well. Marriage is not a guarantee. It is blood sport. It is competition. Every woman is not going to win. And you are going to have to compete. All spirit in love and war. So what do black women who want to have a husband, especially if they want a black man, what are they going to have to do? They're going to have to do what? Figure it out. I'm thinking I mean, I mean, people in the comment section are saying the same lazy. I just don't get it. I don't, they, they really how want, that, I just don't understand how is that lazy? If we're just saying that it's, it's hard for us to try with someone who literally, so, doesn't want to give us a so it's hard. Okay. It's, it's hard, hard for you to try. So what? So what? So what? It's hard for you to try. It's hard for you to try. It should be harder for you to live alone and die by yourself. So what is hard for you to try? Then what? Then what? It's hard for you to try. Ma'am, it's hard for you to try. You're a uh, ma'am. It's hard for you to try. Ma'am, it's hard for you to try. Do you have a college degree? No. Okay. Sorry, ma'am. Life is hard. Anything worth having in this life is worth working for. You sound lazy. It's hard. So what? Having, if a man had to work for a worthwhile woman, you women would say, a woman like her is worth working for. True or false? Yes. Thank you. But I never said men, black men weren't working for. I'm saying With, black uh, men aren't. Go back and look at the comment section, man. You don't get it. I get it. You don't get it. And this is how far they've fallen, guys. She really doesn't get it. She really doesn't. And I don't I blame you for not what getting you're it. Saying, but what I'm saying to you is how can we try? and put forth this effort to somebody who's not even receptive. You First of all, that's a disingenuous ass question. You assume that 100% of black men are not there. I'll give it to you this way. You know how you do it? Because I'm a salesperson. Your job as a salesperson starts when somebody says no. If everybody bought that you asked, there would be no need for you. That means you have to deal with rejection. That means you're saying that how do we do how do we do this to a group of men who don't want it? You go ask them what they want. You knock on the door and say, "How can I make? How can I get you to be my boyfriend? How can I get? How? What do you need for me to become your wife?" You got to actually go to the consumer. I know it's I know it's crazy. You got to go to the person who you want to purchase your product and give them what they want. I know it's wild. You don't go to the market and say, hey, tell me how to sell you. Hey, I got this. I got this widget to sell. Tell me how you go out and do all the research and tell me how to make millions of dollars off you. Lazy. They want it easy, gentlemen. Great call because it really typifies the problem. It really typifies the problem. Point blank perk. 
It typifies the problem. They simply do not get it. Black men don't like us. Black men ain't. Uh, 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 but then, then my, first, first it was guys my age aren't into relationships. Unless it's with a white woman or Hispanic woman. Well, then guys your age are into relationships. Well, yeah, but only if it's that or this. Well, are the, are the black women who are in the, in the competition, are they physically fit? No. Well, it ain't brain surgery or rocket science. It's not hard, ladies. It's not hard. Um, let's see. Chiefs. Okay. Your microphone's not on. Primrose. Hey. Hello. Hey. Hello. I'm doing good. How are you? I am well. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on here today. I see the How old are you? I'm 28 years old. All right. Single or married? I'm single. All right. So. Question on the table, modern women, do you really understand how bad they've gotten? Oh, so from my experience and from what I'm seeing on my end over here in Atlanta, no, they don't know how bad it has gotten and how bad we need to change. And honestly, I feel like because, and I don't even mean to say I feel like, but from the programming on television, especially with my generation, um, TV basically grew us. So when you had the Bad Girls Club, you had all these reality TV shows of uh, women being belligerent and seemingly winning because they're on TV. Mm -hmm. Then it set the tone that when I was coming up, it looked like the thing to do, the thing to be, the woman to be loud and just out here. So it's the, right. it's the, it's the, uh, it's definitely the. I'm going to ask you in Atlanta, I live here and it's 17 to one. If, if it was 17 men to one woman, do you think men would know they would have to compete to get that one woman? 17 to one, yes. They would have to compete to get one. I say, do you think they would know they'd have to compete? If there's only one woman and... and so if, there, if, if you went to a place where there were 17 men and one woman, do you think the men of that population would know and understand that if they want a woman, they got to compete to get yes. her? Because yes. she's limited. Okay. Do you feel like the women of Atlanta compete? To get men? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, okay. okay. Yes, they, I, I think that the women are competing in a sense, but they are not, they're not competing because they don't know what a man wants. So they're competing, they're, they're doing something, or at least, you know, when they dress up, put on the makeup, put on everything, they're going out there to compete because they want to look good. But I feel like they're competing against other women. To so say what you, so better. what you just, what the example you just gave me is mm -hmm. I asked you, what would, would men have to compete for a woman? And you said, yes, because men would know the game they're in. The right. example you just gave me is women are in a game of NFL football, but then they're competing in a game of checkers. Right. Then they're not competing. No, they're not competing. They're not. Thank you. That's why I asked the question competing. that way. Because Correct. women <laughs> think they're competing, yep. but they're competing according to their rules and they're according to women. Because in Atlanta, you see hair, nails, yeah. colors, weight, and men say they don't want any of that stuff. And this is the land of all that. And the men are like, we don't want this. And yet you keep giving it to us. How many times have I have, how many times have I said it? Men want women who are fit, feminine, friendly, cooperative, submissive. Yet the one thing that all women can control immediately is their fitness level. Eesh. Yeah. 80% of our women are not competitive based on that alone. Yeah, that's sad. Very much true. And I agree. I agree. But I mean, you know, that that's a that's a United States problem as well. Everybody's damn near obese here these days. But um, that, so why, that why, 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 I'm curious. Why does that matter? Why does what matter? It's a United States problem. Oh, well, no, I'm saying the obesity problem is a problem mm -hmm. um, for people being big in general. I mean, it's not even just 
women and men, but for what we're talking about, I mean, it's not just women, it's also men, but for what we're talking about, more specifically, it's very important that women, because like you said, you see guys are going to see you. The why I asked that question, ma'am, is because that too is what's in our culture. We have been able to just put stuff in that doesn't matter in order to okay. deflect or justify. I got what you're saying. Women in our community will sit back and say, well, damn, yeah. Sis said it in, yeah, it's the United States. Uh, black women are getting married at a rate of 26%. The next lowest group of women is white women at 54. So you getting they're doubling you up. And the average, ma- average black marriage is five years. At almost a 60% divorce rate, and divorce is filed 80% of the time by the woman. These are these are facts. I mean, but why? Why? Like, that's not a real question. I mean, I get why. Like I just said, programming and, and we messed mm, up. Why? Like, why? Why? Well, number one, uh, in our in our culture, women have been told that they're the prize and you're supposed to be happy. So just like the woman I talked to earlier, who couldn't get her mind around the fact that. Women actually got to get out and compete and get on a man's page instead of saying, we got to cooperate with each other. No, you got to cooperate with us because like it or not, non-black women are all in these spaces and they're seeing that black women are not competing for their black men. Mm. And they are, and they have no problem coming and scooping up the guys you don't want. And they're looking over. I mean, but it's a land of the free. Do you have a shot to get him? Sure. You had a shot. But how often, how old are you, 20 what? 28. All right. So how how many times in your life have you heard black women talk and laugh about laugh about women getting up early in the morning, going to yoga class and, and, and starving themselves and eating this and that? How many times you heard that? Go, you said starving themselves? Well, that's what black women would say, starving themselves. How many times have you heard black women laughing at other groups of women who get up and eat a plant-based diet and go work out, diet, and are fasting and, you know. Oh, you know I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they, 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 they definitely make fun of people who are mm-hmm. more conscious. Right, right, right. Monique, made, you know, a lot of comedians who made an entire career out of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. But yeah. those women were being competitive. Our women aren't even trying to be competitive for us. I mean, and it makes sense. But can I ask you this question? Go ahead. So, what is it that um, I know you talk about women not knowing even what to choose in a man? Like, what is it? Because you said it's not even about love anymore. And and you know, through our programming growing up, we've fetishized love and wanting to find love, and oh, it's going to be a happily ever after. But that's not the reality of the world. So, what is it that black women? quote unquote and and saying like Woo, you gotta you gotta bring it home home gotta land the plane what's the question yes um okay. what is it that black women have to look for in a black man what what are we looking for question okay wow what what do you mean i don't understand the question what are you looking for in a black man in what regard yeah to to choose the right man because I watched something that you talked about. Women don't well, know. Right, choose the right man for what? Marriage? For marriage. Yeah, marriage. Mm-hmm. Oh. What'd your father say? And that's why I'm asking you, sir. Because okay. he did not tell me. Okay, so, so were your mother and father married? They are still married. And do, is your father helping you vet the men you date? No. Why not? Um, my dad did not, wasn't raised by his father. So, um, I love my dad, but he, there are just some things that he just doesn't do, doesn't know how to do. How long is you married to your mother? 43 years. Sounds like you know how to pick a woman. Says, said again? Sounds like you know how to pick a woman. He'd be married 43 years. Yep. They've been working together. No, no, no. I mean, sorry. She's been working. So, together. so <laughs> you, the the man who married your mama for 43 years, mm-hmm. 
He has not in, he's, he, but you've just not gone to get his counsel in any of this. Thank you. No, 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 no. I'm not saying I haven't tried. What, like I said, my dad. So when you go up and say, Dad, help, I'm trying to understand how to pick a man like you so I can have a, a, a marriage. He just says, I get out of my face, daughter. No, 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 no. So if, okay, example, I brought a man to my dad before. Uh, plenty of men, because when I'm dating. You I'm brought dating. a man to your father. That's the problem. So what's Thank the, you. Okay. You can't make this shit up. I said, yeah. is your father helping you sort through men? See, the answer is oh, you're not supposed to be picking men. Men are supposed to be picking you. Put your dick up. Too sense. many of you women think you can get out here and pick a man and then pr present him in front of your fathers and then what well, he doesn't approve of him because I don't know how to pick. But what if I don't like who picked me? You cannot make this shit up, people. This is perfect. Everything she just said, she just negated in two sentences. Everything she just said, she negated in two sentences. A 43-year married father. What if I don't like you? Pick me. That's your fucking problem. What you like don't work. Oh, uh, damn. You right. I ain't gonna tell you that ain't you. That's right. That's why I'm single now. Huh? <laughs> okay. And then two rebellious to sit up under your father who apparently knows what he's doing. He picked a woman to marry for 43 years. See, other communities do that. Just like you've heard them talk. That's the problem. We have a matriarchy. And y'all think y'all know what you're doing. And you pick men based on what? What is the one characteristic you should pick a man based off of? That's a question to you. I'm sorry, say it again. You got what's the what's the what's the what is the one characteristic, the major characteristic you should choose a man off of? One I should choose him off of? Protection, based on protection? Being able to provide? Nope. Oh, we'll see. I don't know. There you go. That's why you That's why you pick wrong. I, I ain't gonna tell you no. That's what I said. I, protection. I protection. So Character. But what you like, what makes you, get, what gets you moist, ain't character. That's why I let that go, folks, because it is our culture. And even the most well-intended, this still goes down to this atavistic mating standard. You ladies want the men you like that you're sexually attracted to. Then you want to heap his characteristic, you want to heap character and production protection and provision and all these other things on him. And that ain't how it works. You pick a man, you a man is ba picked based upon his character, his ability to provide and protect. The package it comes in is irrelevant. You need to be attracted to him. Him be attractive to you is secondary. You're the, supposed to be the cute one. He's supposed to be the productive one. But in our community, black women want black men to be black women. You want the men to be cute. Oh no! You, you cute, like whatever. That's not what you pick a man of. What's the biggest age gap you have dated a man? How many years? What's the oldest man you've ever dated? How many years older than you? At the time, uh, he's seven years older than me. Okay. In the ballpark, seven to ten years is the minimum. Mm hmm. But again, and this is what goes on. Our, our women want to pick people who are age inappropriate, character inappropriate. When you have a model in front of you, they reject the model. And then you're left answering what the problem is. Now, I got a hard question for you. Mm -hmm. Height? My height? 5'3". Mm -hmm. I'm Dress five, size? Three. Dress size 4. Okay. Do men prefer women with short, medium, or longer hair? Uh, depends on the man. Oh, bull fucking shit. Ah, oh, come on. Bull fucking shit. I got guys to love by Bull hair. fucking shit. Wow, beauty standards, really? Okay, long hair. Let's go with it. Long it's not, not beauty standards. 
Men have evolved to like women with longer hair because it shows a woman who has lived and been healthy and not sick. So she's more likely than not to be able to get his children into the next generation. That's on any freaking continent during any period of time. It is not white European standards. It's evolutionary goddamn biology. So in Africa, the women that come evolutionary from- biology. So when you tell me it oh, depends, it doesn't depend. Just like why, why men like a certain hip to waist ratio because it's easier to get a child through that birth canal. The same reason why you tend to like men who have broader shoulders and narrow waist because they're better hunters. This is why I go back down to the uh, fundamental. Our women absolutely do not know who we are. They're completely clueless about us. They don't know what we think. They don't know how we pick. And when you start telling them what we like, oh, that's because the white man. Like, we don't know our own damn minds. So the women in Africa who have short hair now... You ain't in Africa. I want to be. I really want to be. Go to Africa. <laughs> Go to Africa and fucking ride a zebra then. What? Come on, Mr. Samuels. I'm just... Okay. I got you. I understand. Why do you want to okay. go to Africa? Because I just... It don't feel... It doesn't feel... I mean, that's besides the topic. It doesn't feel what? No, it doesn't feel what? Here does not feel normal, natural. Something is just not connecting for me here. And of course, that could just be a a me thing. That's why I'm in therapy trying to figure out all it is because there's just a lot going on. So, yeah, I just, I think, I've never been to Africa before. Right. So I'd like to visit. What third world? Okay. Have you ever traveled outside the United States? Yes, plenty of times. Where? What? What? Uh, to where? I'm Jamaican, so Jamaica, plenty of times. Europe, uh, Dubai. I've been Jamaica, there. Jamaica. Uh, were you staying in the resorts, or did you go to stab in no, Jamaica? No, family. I live. I, I'm from Jamaica. We have family. I, I stay with family. Okay. Would you live there? Would I live in Jamaica? And, and not on the resorts. Kind of like in in in, in the countryside. After living here, no. Thank you. You're in a, you're, you, this is what I mean. We got so many first world damn women who want to go get back in contact with the motherland and you are a first world Western woman. You're out of place. You go to Africa. You're going to find out out of place real goddamn quick. So you, you, you beat boxes, start beat boxes, rock and <laughs> go find real quick. This Western First world country standards out of place. The the real place you're out of, ma'am, is in the order with men. This is one of the reasons so many modern women are lost. That's why I'm doing this call. You're lost because you're out here alone and you should be with a man. We are your only purpose for being on the planet. We are your reason for being. Single, solitary female cannot survive in the environment alone. We are your reason. Oof. That's why I see so many women out here depressed. I'm a PhD, PhD, all this other stuff, and four, one out of four on some sort of psych med, depressed because you are not with your natural, hereditary, biological counterpart. You're a man. So you're going to seek meaning elsewhere on a continent in a book, Hotep, Shaza Bay, whatever, when it really should be Malik. Malik. That's your, that's why you're lost. And your 43 year old, 43 year married father who apparently has done something he's supposed to, they ain't lost. They know exactly what the fuck they're doing. But you got to go uh, touch the continent to go to try to what, divine the ancestors and Go go to the what? The ancestral plane? Yes. Wakanda forever. <laughs> Y'all lost because you're not next to your men. You don't think that's a you think I'm kidding? Bring your ass over here to uh-huh. shops at Buckhead and just sit out here on any Friday or Saturday night and you watch non-black couples sitting at these tables and watch how they interact with one another. Watch how women are reaching over, touching their husband's hands, smiling, laughing, and such and so forth. And you come out in here and watch, you see groups of four women. And then we see, do you see men and women? It's more likely to be this. You're out of alignment. You're out of position. 
So the, what you're looking for ain't on the continent. I don't think so. That's why I said uh, we just lost Michael K. Williams. Omar, uh, we got to play the Omar on the wire. Yeah. yeah. We're not meant to be alone. The human animal is a social creature. We are not meant to live. In, we're meant to live in groups of roughly around 150, 200. The largest human settlements, the massive ones back in the were 5,000. And that's after the agrarian economy. When we were hunter gatherers, you didn't have large groups of people. You had 150 people that were like eight, 10 families. You married the dude. That, we, that is who we are. And the women grew up with the boys and they knew from the time that they were little that the men go out there and bring the meat. They keep their safety and everything else. They are our reason that we're safe and secure and everything else. You have a, you owe something to your men. They owe something to you. Do you actually think our women are moving through this world like you owe anything to us? I have a hard time getting women to even admit that they should smile at black men. Black women have a hard time getting black women to admit that she even should smile to black men. Can I interject? I don't mean to cut you off right there. But um, that that was actually something that you, I heard you talking to another young lady about smiling because that was something um, growing up in, in school that I was told I smiled too much at people. So I was reprimanded for smiling too who told you much that? at men. Black who told men. You? A black who to, no, who, who told you that? Who told you smile? a teacher, a black man. Okay, a black, a bl a black man, hold on. A black male teacher. Yes. Told you you smile at black men too much. In what grade? Um, eighth, eighth or seventh, seventh, eighth grade. I was in middle school. Mm -hmm. And what'd your daddy say? I never told my dad. Hmm. I never told my dad. I just felt bad. I felt bad for it. And that is another thing. And that's also why I'm going to therapy because a lot of I have experienced a lot of I feel like negative. I'm sorry I'm slapping this I'm, no a man that ain't your father tells you you smile too much at men and you don't go tell your father yeah we didn't have an open uh, communicative relationship when I was younger it's better now but when I was younger it was not very good so there were issues there why I no I did not tell him did he keep a roof over your head did he keep you protected and provided for Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. He wasn't meant to be your friend. He's meant to be your father. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Too many of our women, even when you have us in there, because we're not your friends. Hello. Uh, hi, Mr. Samuels. How are you? Um, you can hear me? Yeah, I can. How old are okay. you? Um, I'm 26 years old. Okay, so modern women, are you single or are you married? I'm in a relationship. Are you? Th that means you're single. Technically, yeah. I think not technically. Have you? Are you legally married? I'm not legally married. No. So that means you're single. Okay. I mean, I don't. <laughs> Why is that so hard? I know. I know. Right? Yeah. I'm single. See, see how I, I see how the instinct to just be a conflict at odds with us is. The truth is what it is, but nope, I gotta split a hair with you. Already starting off bad. I mean, a man is in my life. But that, but are you married to that man? Well, marriage is in. This is why I'm on here today. Are you married to that man at the time of this French toast freaking conversation? Absolutely not. Then you are single. Okay, I'm Stop single. Stop the cap. It's not that complicated, man. I'm just saying. It was it's not even this isn't even something to divert the conversation. But but here we go. Just like most single modern most modern women don't realize how bad things have gotten. It's absolutely unnecessary. A distinction without a difference. You're not married, you're single. Regardless as to what you're talking about, you're single today. Go ahead. Okay, so your question was pretty much if uh, our modern day woman aware of how bad they've gotten. Not and 
of going down that road being a young black I don't know what it's called girl growing up in America and lie. being another statistic like being pregnant at a young age and all of that and like the crowd of friends I used to have like I realized even growing up they've all turned into mothers into single coin. mothers most importantly and I felt street. like I had to remove myself from that immediately because I didn't fit Stop in talking! with them anymore. I didn't relate with them anymore. And um, you know, it's tough out here out here, even having <laughs> French having female <laughs> friends when like most of them are pregnant. Everybody's gonna and, take like, that bitch down. They're not in relationships like how I'm in one. Like I'm with somebody that what? has potential has potential to marry me, sorry. And like, you know, I'm, I've am i never had kids before or anything like, like that. And like, sound. even nowadays, when I try to have these conversations no, on my God. platform with other women and stuff, no, like they shun me, know. they make it seem like, I told you, you know, what did I, tell you? Didn't I, tell I don't you? like women I or you. like, I'm and just talking down on women trying to speak back to And nobody got time for this. Going through the same issues that Did I not make myself clear? are being projected today in this modern day society. Oh, so oh, the answer to your question would definitely be no. Uh, pew, pew, pew. The answer to my question was what? The answer to your question is no. I don't think they understand how bad it's gotten. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that you talk for almost five minutes? What yes. Are we to have a conversation or what? No, yeah. Um, I was just answering your question with the title. Mm -hmm. My my point is, ma'am. We kind of started off on the wrong foot and then you just kind of went on a monologue. That's a lot. You answered the question and said, women don't realize how bad it's gotten. And I agree. One of the things is men are really simple. You understand that? Yes. All right. So do you really expect me to keep up with everything you just said? I apologize. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying this is a learning thing. Yeah, definitely. Y'all got to start understanding who we are. Y'all talk to us like we're kids. Did anybody else pick that up? So, um, all right, let me go ahead and bring in, what's her name? Uh, Diamond, go ahead. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. How old are you? I'm 27. Good. Single or married? Single. All right. Modern women. Uh, do you think they understand how bad things are really gotten? Honestly, I don't. I don't think women understand how bad it is. Um, hold, 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 hold on just a second. <clears throat> So you don't think they understand how bad things have really gotten? Right. Okay, go ahead. Why 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 is that? Um just I don't know if, from like okay, I'm 27, I'm a a millennial. Mm -hmm. um, what we see, like what's being portrayed out there, like the everyday, the BET, the VH1, the MTV, like a lot of women are looking at that, like, and then and I do believe like a lot of women. I don't know if this matters, but aren't religious at all. They don't, 
They don't have a foundation. I got, I, got, actually... I got a question for you. I got a question for you. Yes. Would you like to be married one day? Absolutely. Okay. So I have a question. Do you think you and women your age really know or understand what it takes to get married? Meaning at 27 and everything you see on TV is like, wait till you wait till you're 30, then you'll settle down. Do do women seem I think do you think women seem to think getting married is gonna be simple? Or easy? I don't know, honestly. Like, can I like go ahead. Go ahead. speaking for myself, like I always thought marriage would be hard. Okay. And then I got into this relationship recently and like we're dating to marry and like mm-hmm. I've realized how gosh darn hard it is like it's and not that you know so 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 let's stop right there if it's that gosh darn hard do you think it makes sense to delay it no thank you no that's the ultimate point because i think so many of our our sisters have been convinced to postpone or delay marriage because they think they can just get married kind of like that when I'm turned 30, I can just decide to hang up my 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 hot girl spurs and then go find them and find them in. And then you realize that, oh well, damn, I'm still dating like I was at 21. It's hard. It is. Okay, good. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, you got anything else you want to add? Um, no. Thank you for letting me and you scare Appreciate everyone. It. You scare nah, me too. Nah. So I'm going. Nah, yeah, we're fine. <laughs> you, your, you came in doing the right thing. Her energies, her energies was right. So, guys, we got to get up off here. It's almost one o'clock. But look, I want ladies to think about this. How often is like, oh, I'm too young to get married. I am too young to get married. Okay. But if you think you're going to pop up at 28 to 32 years old, I'll be like, all right, now I'm ready to get married. Okay, where are, you going, where are these men going to come from? Uh-oh, she said, let me get my hair ready. How you doing? Go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, mute yourself. There you go. Oh my gosh. Hi. Oh my gosh. How old are you? I'm 21. 21 years old. Uh, Single or married? I'm assuming single. Single. Yes. All right. Do you think modern women understand how bad things have really gotten? Truthfully, I think modern women do. I want to ask you if you think that we understand how bad we've gotten. No. Absolutely not. I think think that most women think that things are bad for many women, just not them. I don't think that they realize that they are them. Mm, I, okay. I think that's a, that's like a deflection. Like that's just something that women say, like in a conversation, uh, say the women that get on your broadcast and they're communicating with you, taking that accountability and saying, yeah, I'm, I'm one of those women. I think that just is like a fight or flight response to the question. I don't think many women are self-aware. I have done this for over a year and most women have not even thought about the math that it would take to raise three children and be a wife. How else can you get almost 99% of the women coming up on my platform and wanting men making $100,000 or more, $200,000 or more? There's just not that many men. But yet, just like I asked a lot of women, what do you rank yourself? And they're all eights. I'm like, well, if Beyonce is an eight, you're an eight. I think most women don't realize that they are part of the problem. How long have you been watching my platform? Did you mute yourself? You muted yourself, probably. Unmute, okay. Wait, I can't see you. Uh, that's okay. I- How long have you been watching my platform? Throwing me off. I've, I've known of you for like a year and I've mm-hmm. watched a few of your broadcasts. Okay. Well, if you watch about... 
at least five of them, mm-hmm. you'll start to see a through line. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a there's a high level of denial and delusion. Mm-hmm. So at your age, maybe your peer group uh, is a lot smaller, but and it doesn't matter what side of the country, what time zone, even really what generation, there's a through line that relationships are difficult and many modern women don't have the skills to do long-term relationships. We're talking about modern women in this country? In, in the United States or in well, yeah, first world countries. In, the, in uh, this country. That's all this country. country. Um, I personally feel like we haven't been taught those skills. So uh, were mother and father married? Were my mother and father married? Mm-hmm. My mother and father were divorced when I was four, and then I grew up with my stepfather. Okay. They've been married. Who was for supposed to, if you were if you were to learn those skills? Who was supposed to teach you? my mother and my father, my father, in relation, it, it's specifically about how to communicate with men and deal with men. My father should have taught me those skills. Um, okay. And to, to, to learn relationship skills, you're supposed to learn them from your father? And my mother, my mother and my father. Who's primary? Mother. Right. Like, so if you didn't, so if you didn't, if you didn't learn it, who dropped the ball? Mothers or fathers? My, well, my mother. Mothers. Mothers are the first teachers of their children. So yes. even if I say, grant the argument that you weren't taught, women have always taught women of the, of the group how to be wives and mothers. So now women are teaching women how to get jobs. The broadcast I do on Friday, the sister-daughter broadcast, and when I drop the dime and tell most women that the big problem, big problem most women have today is they can't check their mother. They won't hold their mothers accountable because their mothers failed them. Right. It doesn't mean you don't love your mother, but if your mother taught you how to get out here and hustle and this and that, but she didn't teach you how to get along with the very men that you would like to couple with because fathers don't teach you that fathers teach you what a man's supposed to do mothers are supposed to teach you how to serve and 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 cooperate with that man through what she does so in the west in the west in the west this is the issue because a woman is in feminism or anything else. In other countries where that means more patriarchal, you still see some of these things. Go ahead. So now we're in the situation where the mothers have failed. Mm-hmm. Now, I would say that a percentage of our male population has failed as fathers. I don't know how you feel about that statement. I think but... it's, uh, failed as fathers how? of not being around, you know, the deadbeat dad. Excuse me, are you talking about black men? Talking about black men. Okay, that's absolutely wrong according to the data and the facts. Black men, 51% of black men, 54% of black men are single and childless, 61% are in the middle class. According to the CDC, black men are statistically the best, most involved fathers in the country. The the absolute facts and data have disproven this BS... Excuse me, this, the facts and data have disproven this over and over again. This is, this is stuff that black women say to discredit black men. Could this it is why, have been true excuse, excuse in me, like excuse the- me, Excuse me, this is why you have so many non-black women coming over to black men because black men are more willing to even work with women because most come from patriarchy. Could it have been true? Uh, not, not in the ways it's been said, no. No, the fact the data is there, ma'am. The data is there for 2021, but I'm thinking about work. No, young lady, young lady, are you in college? No. Okay. Well, maybe I should rephrase that. May I rephrase that? You don't. I'm, I'm just being. I'm, I'm gonna try to help you. Okay. You don't know what you're talking about. You know what you've been told. 
Right. You've been told that black men are not are not up to par, and that's not true. Well, but then I have my experience and like everyone. Ma'am, ma'am, 54% sorry. of black men are single and childless. That means there can't be a plethora of deadbeat dads with over half of black men have no children. 61% are in the middle class. 30% of black men are married. That means the bulk of the children in the black community are being made by roughly less than 20% of the men. Of you can't what? say black, you cannot say the black men and this, the, the stereotype of the deadbeat dad is accurate. It's not even precise. It's simply untrue. Uh, of what percentage of... It's simply untrue. 54% single, childless. 30% married. That's 84%, right? So right? That's 84%, right? Okay. That means 16% of men roughly account for the lion's share of the children in the black community. What percentage of black children in the black community are born into a single parent household? That is the question I um, was 80%. Okay. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. And these and now these men, single parent household means unmarried, right? Right. Right. And these women are having children with men who have children with other women. Fifty four percent of black men are single and childless. So you have less than 20 percent of the men making all these kids with women who know these men are not married to their baby mama. And they're choosing to lay down and choosing to carry a child to pregnancy. And choosing to be a single parent, the number one, the largest group, the largest group of first time mothers, single mothers are college educated women in their 30s. Mm, right. Right. So, so we're talking about so the okay. myth of the deadbeat dad is untrue. And you really in what state do you live in? New Jersey. Go down to your local family court on any Tuesday and sit in family court for for 30 days and you will see the amount. You will see what happens to men when they go to court. Women can go to court right now and get they don't have to have any money. They get a, they get represented by the state. Men have to come up with an, an, tens of thousands of dollars just to try to get custody. Watch the channel. I don't want to. There's just so much in this. When you say deadbeat, I just because that's how all this stuff got started. We don't hold women accountable for the fracturing of the family and why things are the way they are. We always look to find the way the man is at fault. That's how we got started right here, because we were talking about one situation. And you, and like most black women, you try to go around and say, well, then black men have something to do with it, too. Well, it takes two people to create a child. Takes one it's to decide, ma'am. What? Okay. And what does that? And what does? And what? And that means what? So I wanted to get to. It take no. I mean that means what? No, you don't finish this thought. It means what? Well, the statistics of um, single. Takes two people to create a child means what? I'm gonna connect that to this statement that I'm making now, because you kind of said a lot in the last few minutes. I can do that. It's my platform. I know, but I'm trying to keep up and tie all together. Mm -hmm. Instead of just answering like one section, which I feel like we're not really bringing the whole piece together. Well, it's because you but don't know what you're talking about. It's because you don't know what you're talking about. I mean, you don't know what you're talking about, ma'am. Saying it takes two people to make a child. Yeah, but it take, but only one person can decide whether or not to bring it to, to term. And when most people are laying down and having sex, they're not choosing to make a child. They're having sex. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the women that are making these choices now. The women that are sleeping with these men and getting pregnant now are fully grown women. You're saying majority of them in their 30s. That means that they grew up in the 80s and the 90s till now. So what was the percentage of um, single mothers and fathers then over that time period, not the statistics that we're getting today? Why? 
because that will show you the character of the man and how. And no, how it doesn't. No, it doesn't. And see, guys, I, this, this, this sorry, is what I want you guys to understand. This is what I, I want. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. This is what I need you guys to understand. They don't like holding women accountable. See, I, when you, it's it's moving the goalposts. No, ma'am, because what I you want to say? Well, the the facts are. No, no, no. I don't. See, this is what it is today, but let's go back to see what the stats were with their fathers. In my father's generation, you still had similar statistics. Ma'am, bottom line is women choose when children are born. Sorry. This is okay. this is the woman that, okay, going asking me a question about the statistics of the 90s and 80s that when you're 21 years old to try to prove a point you can't make that point you're just looking for some way to end up making your argument well, stick. i wasn't there so i'm just trying to connect yeah. it and make it make sense for me so how about I this the problem just... starts with the women okay it's... the wi women control access to childbirth and sex So we're saying that true or false tr true. All right. So a child cannot be born. If a woman does not want to carry it to term, regardless as to who had sex with what, if I had sex with you and you wanted to terminate uh, your pregnancy, could I force you to ma have our child? Absolutely not. Right. So regardless as it takes two people, it takes one to decide. I'll accept that. Let me ask you a fundamental question. Okay. The breakdown of the nuclear family, the majority yes. of responsibility lies, the breakdown of the nuclear family in a black community, the majority of the responsibility lies upon the black man or the black woman. The breakdown mm -hmm. as far as the structure, as far as like the leadership? The, dis the dissolution, the breakup, ma'am, I'm not going to give you any specifics. It's the general question. Okay, I would say, I would say the black man. I Thank do. you. Thank you. Thank you. And this is where this woman is feminist up. At 21 years old, mm -hmm. with, no, with no real thoughts of training, this is what we get. When you just say 54, 50, the breakdown of the black family. We have an almost 60% divorce rate mm -hmm. in this country, okay? In our black community. Black women marry at a rate out of 26%, one in four. So three out of four black women will never marry in their lifetime. So one out of four will marry. Mm -hmm. The average black marriage lasts five years. So when we get to that 60% divorce rate of these few black marriages that black women and black men are in, what percentage of divorces are filed by black women? I have heard you say this. I don't know the percentage, but majority of them. The majority. So when you look at the breakdown of the family, who's filing for divorce? Women. Hmm? The women. Well, then that's oh, who's okay, now I'm getting that's it. who's responsible. The person that leaves. The number one cause of divorce is filing for divorce. If you have eighty percent of the children being born to motherless fatherless homes, that's women deciding to have children before they have the benefit of marriage. So where is this coming from, though? Like, why is why is a whole group of women perpetuating this behavior? Like, it seems ridiculous. Obviously, it's ridiculous. You know, we see the women come onto your broadcast. Why do you, why do you think it is, ma'am? Because women have freedom. I, I honestly, because women have freedom. Black women have freedom. Black women okay. have freedom, and you've yeah. been black women have freedom. And they have been freed from the black men because in 1965, the Great Society came along. And guess what? Black women were given the option. That's what I was trying to get to. But then it uh, continued well, but, 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 but But you don't know. But you weren't even. I, anyway. I know. Then, but then, then why are you asking, ma'am? Then why are you asking? Then, then if, you know, if you know, if you know, if you know, if you know that, then you know why the breakdown of the black family happened. Women chose government assistance, government benefits over a man in the house. But at. At the do, same no, time, do you not know that? I know that. Okay, then how, can, then how can you say that black men are responsible if you know that one fact? Well, no, not that they're responsible, that maybe that they were used in that moment. No, they weren't used. See, again, that's bullshit. There yeah. we go again. 
Nope, absolutely not. There we go again with that black women were used. Black, you're talking about adults. They no, made their, women. they made, black, so black women, so how were they, so they're not responsible. No, I was saying that maybe black men were used in the same scheme of the government that handed government assistance to black women. Black women had a choice. At the same time that black women had a choice. Black women, black women had a choice. Black women had a choice. Black women had a choice. This is the modern feminist. This is a pro black, pro black feminist. Black. This is and this is your problem. This is what's this is what black men are not dating. As cute as she is, to rap. This is what black men are having to deal with. This is what they're having to deal with. A bunch of useless knowledge going to a feminist ideal. This is what was proper. This is what's going on. So many colleges in you. I'm glad I took this call because you older ladies want to see what you wrought. And women of my generation, this is the product. 21 years old. This is the product. Generation X. This is your daughter. Putting the putting the ask. Who would you hold responsible for the breakdown of the black family? And even knowing the great society and the Monaghan report, she still puts it to black men. This is that color purpling of the black community. This is why so many black men are tired. You're just, you're, you're just, you're talking to yourself. Now you can go ahead and you can't over talk. Oh, I, I was on you. mute. I didn't. Yeah, yeah, cause you're not gonna over talk me. That's the thing. Cause I don't mute you, but you're not gonna. I have to start raising my voice. I, I know you could hear me, right? I tend to do that. It just like happens. So you tend to be rude. It's not that I try to be rude. I'm just very like spontaneous, impulsive, not spontaneous, impulsive at times. Do you have a job? Do you have a job? Um, I haven't worked since COVID. I've been okay. trading in the okay. foreign exchange market. Okay. Um, do you do that when your when your manager's talking? When you had a job? When I had a job, I'm sorry. What was the question? When you had a job, did you do? Did you just over talk your employer too? Prior to COVID, I had worked for myself for two years, driving DoorDash deliveries and. Mm -hmm. I work for myself, so I never really cared to have a boss, and that's why I'm pursuing entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a, this is all bad. Uh, is it bad? Yep, all bad, all bad. So because, where do we because because ma'am, you can you cannot like it, but the reality is you cannot keep deflecting and not putting responsibility for the fracture of the black family everywhere else other than with black people. Mm -hmm. and, if it, and, and, and if who is choosing today to have children without marriage in the freest, lead, no, no Jim Crow, no segregation, none of that stuff, 80% Choosing, knowing all the facts, the data, statistics, children tend to do better in a nuclear parent household. We know these facts, right? Yes, 100%. Then why are black women still choosing to have children outside of the bonds of marriage at an 8 out of 10 rate? Why do you think black women are doing that? I think that black women are reacting kind of unconsciously at, from trauma. Um, there's a word for this. It's cognitive dissonance where it's called bullshit. I mean, but that's it's, it's called like, bullshit. It's the only explanation. It's called, it's called, bull, it's called it's bullshit. It's the only explanation. It's a called bullshit. Yep. And, and and this is why I do what I do. Black women are always the victim. Obsidian calls them the victim queens. They're never responsible. It's always somebody else's fault. Cognitive dissonance, racism, white supremacy, Jim Crow. Mr. Did it. Color purple. It's always somebody else's fault. How do you build anything? Gentlemen, avoid women who think like that. 
You're not going to change them. You don't try to save them. Avoid them. Don't be rude to them. Don't be mean to them. The worst thing you can do is get into a relationship and reproduce with a woman who thinks like that. There will be no peace. There will be no tranquility. Shame, insult, guilt, the need to be right is what you saw in a 21-year-old. DoorDash. I mean, glad you got a job, you entrepreneur thing. But why are 21-year-old women this damn aggressive and angry? You got to ask. Just because she wasn't calling a bunch of bitches and hoes and so forth, the outcome is still the same. Black man is your fault. Can't make this shit up, man. You cannot make this shit up. That's why I let the last call go. Godfather is pretty damn good at reading that energy. Modern women will never understand how bad things have gotten. While people while people keep deflecting and 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 um softening the blow. But guess what? Guess what? Winter is coming. Winter is coming. The eviction moratorium has been ruled unconstitutional. The last little bit of unemployment is gone. We are about to, the economic, the, the economy last month produced 30% of what they thought it was going to produce. Job growth slowed. We're about to go into an economic slowdown to rival the Great Depression. With the rise of this new variant strain and over the last several years, some progress has been made. But other groups have realized that the strength is in the group. Every other, if you look at the marriage filings, they were up in 2021. And every other race of people except in the black community. So I don't, people who don't want to say those, it's a civil war. Or, or we, far too many of our women are in open rebellion with reality. And unfortunately, it's going to take the reality stone to get some of these people back in line. It's going to take the reality stone. When all these options they think they have, I'm, I can do DoorDash, I can do that when they, when, when they ain't working no more. When all this stuff is starting to run out, women are going to start understanding real quick that the very men that you have been holding responsible for your failures, you better you, you better be careful. Better be careful how you speak to about your men. Bet be, better be careful how you speak about your men, because uh, yeah, um, seven Chinese female friends buy a mansion and retire and die together. Shout out to you, Joy. Look, I don't take any particular pleasure in reporting some of this stuff, but I'm gonna keep talking about it. Because someone has to sound the goddamn alarm. Winter is coming. It is time for you women to stop playing. Stop Stop going woman first. You're the only group of women who side with women over your group. Every other group of women knows how to get on code and get with their men. And you keep talking about black men like they're the issue. All right, then who you going to go to? But maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. So what I tell you, gentlemen, keep your head up. Uh, deal with the people who want to get on your page and want to cooperate with you, want to deal with your standards, deal with your boundaries, you know, and don't argue with the folks who don't. There's no need to argue with them. No need to debate with them. Women who want to cooperate and get down with you will make it really known real soon. And the women that don't, hey, wish them best. Wish them well. 
Remember, you got to stay on your purpose. You got to build. You got to grind. You got to keep moving because there is no safety net for you as a man. You got to make it happen. So I'm glad we had this show. This was a good show. Friday night's going to be even better. We are back on the track doing what we got to do over here. Godfather's in the house and the house is back. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Follow me on IG. Oh, and also make sure to join the Patreon. Uh, tomorrow, I'll do my Patreon only stream. It will, The Patreon only streams never make it to YouTube. So again, post a, excuse me, post a link to Patreon in there. Join the family. Also, uh, for people in Patreon, I was gone on, for two weeks on vacation. Remember, you also want to check on the members only tab uh, on Patreon because there'll be not a members only tab on YouTube. Content will start being posted over there as well. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. What am I looking for? But like I said, I refuse to believe that um, there's not that this is that there's not a way out. Gentlemen, you just have to pick the women who want to deal with you. That's all it really comes down to as men. Pick the women who want to deal with you and are committed to wanting to deal with you. And the ones that uh, and the ones that don't, hey. There's always room at, there's always work at the post office. Um let me post this up here. The Patreon link is right here. That was good. That was great. But you know how we do it till the next time. Peace. We are gone. I'm a PhD. you guys let's get it thank you to all the callers thank you to all the guests tomorrow night instagram 10 o'clock shout out to all the panda bears Paul Wall.